Oh, because it was minimized. There we go. Um, okay. All right, from the top. Now I've got the chat on screen, and also no background noise. Uh, crush counter, taking to taking both rewards on hit and frequency into account, change the combo scaling on crush counters. As a punish, this is going to be this is almost certainly going to be ten extra percentage scaling on crush counters. The same way they added ten extra percentage scaling on. Um, what did they do that to? Oh, V trigger activate. Uh, this is going to be the same change as V trigger activate, almost for sure. And this means that already um, a lot of crush counter combos only do a smidge more than regular punish combos. Uh, regular counter hit punish combos. Like Sakura doesn't have a crush counter on Crouch Fierce, but her Crouch Fierce medium Tatsu combo does almost as much as her back Fierce into Charge Fireball. So I'm thinking that after this change, the crush counter punishes are maybe only sometimes going to be um, uh, uh, stronger than the regular ass punishes. I mean, obviously, some characters have to go for crush counter routes. Like, Nikali can't easily start with Fierce on a crush counter scenario, so he would still hit Roundhouse. But probably, and you'd probably do it anyway, you'd probably still do the crush counter combos just for the B-trigger, for the B-meter, because 50% 50, 50 of a B-bar is actually pretty fucking sick. Um, you'd probably keep doing crush counter punishes, but now if you wanted absolute max damage, it probably wouldn't be optimal. Like, uh, in Season... If Sakura was a Season 1 character, her VT punish would probably be like like back fierce charged fireball i don't know fucking some nonsense like that but now i'd want to activate my v trigger before uh i started my punish and i'd want to maybe do a non crush counter punish route considering those two factors the the both of them have changed the scaling quite a lot now you want to avoid this you want to dodge the scaling um that's gonna affect a lot uh yeah i was gonna say uh that's gonna affect neutral a lot more it's gonna affect punishes but it will affect punishes uh, neutral just means that if Yurian gets a fucking stand fierce on you, um, if Birdie gets like a fucking stand run house on you in neutral, the following bullhead isn't going to be as strong. That's not going to be a huge deal. It's probably going to shave off like 10 some damage. Maybe like uh, 15, 20. It's going to shave off somewhere in that territory, depending on uh, who, what kind of crush counter it is. Already most of the really strong neutral crush counters are gone. Most of the new, Most of the crush counters that are still good or uh, most of the crush counters that are still on good buttons in neutral don't have really strong follow-ups anymore. Like, Birdie's stand runhouse at a range isn't that strong, and it's not like Birdie's stand runhouse is just a free button to press. It's kind of slow. Um, or, like, uh, Ibuki towards runhouse is a good crush counter normal, but, like, the follow-up will be a little bit weaker now. Change so a throw break cannot be performed after the move has been input, with the exception of a normal and unique moves. Huh? So that's, like, a... I'm guessing you can't do any sort of like simultaneous special move plus throw, but it might be no like cars into throw to protect you from. I don't know because I didn't know you could do normal and unique moves. I didn't know that's command normals. I guess is unique moves. I didn't know you could do a normal and take a throw during the normal and still tech. That's probably only in the first couple frames. It's probably like uh, stand medium punch plus throw tech works, but like Hadouken plus throw tech doesn't work. That's what I'm guessing. So that's probably just to kill some OSs, but there really aren't that many OSs that actually use that. Um, no, 10 damage, it, it adds up, honestly. Like, the, I can feel, really clearly, I can feel the V-Trigger crush counters, I mean, the V-Trigger scaling. Like, cause there was general V-Trigger scaling, too. It's not just Yurian and Ibuki. There was, like, that on everyone. Th that was also, you know, for the activation, a universal nerf to damage. And it's, it's, it's more significant in that case, because you get beefier combos in that case, but it's still, you know, the damage loss is still visible. You can still feel it. Um, normal throw damage. Increase the parameters for characters that have less reward on hit. I don't know what the fuck that means. I'm guessing that characters who have throws that leave you with absolutely nothing to do, Oki-wise, have stronger throws. That's what I'm guessing, because it says normal throw damage. V-reversals, overall rebalancing for the moves start up in performance. I'm guessing they're probably making them faster or making the shit ones less shit, like Vega or Kami, perhaps. Um... Fourth are stronger, okay. He already gets a pretty not not terribly significant follow up from that. Um, basically nothing, almost nothing. Recovery increased after throw by two frames, so now it's literally nothing. Now you'd get fuck all after a fourth throw. Backward throw is a little stronger. Stand light punch reduced the upwards hitbox, so anti air jab getting even worse, even though it was already nerfed, and even though all air heavies are buffed. All that's going to really affect is him hitting jab on people who are jumping over him, but Ryu has autocorrect DP, so it's not a big deal. 
but it does hurt his anti-air jab even further. Right now, standing standing jab anti-air is really only good for hitting cross-ups, because cross-ups have a much worse hitbox than uh, regular jump-ins. Um, and now it's probably not even going to be good at hitting cross-ups, so you better practice that autocorrect medium DP. Stay medium kick, remove the forward hurt box that appeared before the hitbox and f active frames. The, the hitbox active frames. Uh, that's a buff. That's just making stand medium kick better. That's a good poke, so Ryu can V-trigger that too. If he V-trigger cancels, he gets follow-ups at pretty much all ranges. You can almost always do stand medium kick, activate, stand like kick, and you can literally always do stand medium kick, activate super, I think. Crouch medium kick, change to the collision box will emerge forward when the hitbox becomes active. I'm guessing that's something to do with moving the opponent or something. Collision box. Jodan, that's the um, so the donkey kick. Jodan, Ni Ren Geki, and San Ren Geki. That sounds... No, these are the TCs, I think. Enforce the combo count restrictions. Added float if the final hit hits midair. So now you can get stand... Whoa, wait, time out. What's going on? Oh, wait, no, I got it. It's Stand Fear, Stand Run House. So Stand Fear, Stand Run House, uh, if they're mid-air during the Stand Fierce, which is very, very feasible since Stand Fierce knocks over on Crush Counter. Uh, stand Fierce, Stand Run House, you can now juggle out of, uh, naturally, I'm guessing. So that's actually a pretty big buff, because Stand Fierce is a pretty good Crush Counter normal. And right now, the only balanced thing about that is how incredibly unrewarding it is. And now it's actually pretty rewarding. Hopefully, I mean, it depends. That might only juggle Super, which won't be a big deal. Unless you have a super, in which case it's a huge deal. Uh, Denshin lasts longer. That's cool. Ishin. That's the VT2, I think. I don't know what that is. Counter judgment will become active from one frame of Ishin receiving an attack. Um, I'm guessing that it now has one frame startup after he parries. But it might be that the counter itself has one frame startup. But I think it's one frame startup after he parries. Move the counter, hit judgment from a successful Ishin activation. Huh? He could get... Oh, uh, he could counter hit the opponent with his Ishin, I guess. Yeah, can cancel the recovery into. Oh, that's that's so cool. That's a big buff. Ishin might actually be a really good V trigger now. Um, he can instead of just being able to go to DP and Super or DP and DP into Super, he can now go into EX Donkey Kick. So that means he actually has like a meterless follow up, a one bar follow up, and a three bar follow up. So that's like an actual versatile. And I'm expecting that EX Donkey Kick into hard DP will actually do pretty respectable damage here. So that's that's quite nice. This is this is a really good buff. That's the biggest rebuff we've read so far. Can be cancelled into Axe Kick and Solar Plexus Strike. Never mind, that's the biggest buff. Like, fuck this. I don't care about that. Why would I ever do that? Like, what actually? Why? What? Oh! No, what's going on here? Is it saying I can cancel EX Jodon into Ishin? Because it seems to be saying can cancel EX uh, it seems to be saying cancel e uh, Ishin into EX Jodan. Cancel the recovery into EX Jodan. On hit, yeah, dude. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. Yeah, I would never do that, because you can do Towards Fierce. Solar Plexus? Fuck this. Fuck this entire line. That line is shit. If I can do Parry and then do Towards Fierce. Oh, no, I'm retarded. Can be cancelled into from X Kick and Solar Plexus. So Solar Plexus Strike is minus two, and X Kick is. I think also minus two. So if you do Axe Kick or Solar Plexus Strike towards Fierce or Back Hard Kick, um, you can parry, and even if they do a reversal three-frame move, you, you'll parry them. So basically it makes them second-guess um, doing reversal buttons against those attacks. So that's, like, nice. So overall, these changes are all pretty good for Yushin. This is, like, really buffed. I would maybe pick this trigger now. I wouldn't really call that a gimmick. It's just, it's just it, forces them to, it forces them to not necessarily hit buttons immediately. Technically, you can already do that with a v, with an EXDP. It's just a mix-up. But it's a mix-up where you can just, you know, not try and punish towards Fierce or back hard kick. But that's good for Ryu. So if you can get people to not try and get the counter pressure going, that's that's benefiting them a lot. V Hadouken increase the V-timer usage of each V... So that's, okay, it lasts longer, but you consume more meter doing V Hadoukens. Ouch. Change position at which movement is possible after the move. So that sounds like it either recovers faster or slower, but it might be Ryu moves a little bit once he's done doing the exit Oaken. I don't know. Change the position at which movement is possible. 
I don't know. I mean, it's okay to be... Uh, Ishin is already that. Um, That's the thing. Is like, it's already kind of bad, but if you're desperate enough. So, like, points like that to throw it in are perfect, actually. Um, Yeah, fewer V Hadokens is a pretty bad problem, but also uh, you get the other benefits longer, so I don't know. I, it's probably worse overall for VT1, but it's not it's not the worst, because you still get the buffed, like, punch damage and whatever. It's done. Yeah, I don't even think it's 16, right? If you're just standing there and spamming. Oh, I guess it is, isn't it? Well, it wouldn't be 10. EX sh hard short you can... Uh, damage increased by 10 for first active frame only. So that means if you're doing anti or hard DP, um... You don't get that 10 extra damage? I don't know any other place where you wouldn't get that 10 extra damage. When when do you ever get hard short? You can still don't hit on the first active frame. Hit stop increased for first active frame only. So that's more time to cancel. Hit stop is uh, how long the screen freezes before it resumes. So that's uh, it'll show you the hit. So that makes it easier to do like a wild. That might make it so you can do a wild hard DP, which is invincible from 3 frame onward. And then uh, confirm it to super. You might be able to do hard DP, and then if it's blocked, not do anything, and then get punished. Or if it hits, do super. Which is shitty, but it's there. Um, yeah, sure, you can expand the forward hitbox. That's good. That makes it go farther. Reuse the XDP is... I'm jealous, man. I'd rather have that than Akuma's or Sakura's. Fuck the double rep. I don't like that. It doesn't do anything good. Ryuse has such a nice hitbox, and it always gets the second hit, and it always hits properly. The opponent never falls out. It's very tall, so you can use it to autocorrect, and it's fucking wide enough that it'll actually catch like limbs extended to you, and then it's wide enough that it'll actually get the follow-up hit on the limbs extended into you. I like that EXDP, dude. It's really good. Change the opponent's behavior on first hit. No effect on the battle balance. <laughs> so it's going to have a different animation, I guess, but it's not, it's, not a, it's not a balance change. It's probably just cosmetic. It's probably gonna they're probably gonna change it to a more Shinshore you can style attack. Be sure you can change so it consume Oh, never mind. Never mind. Okay, that 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 actually is shit. <laughs> VT one got got its balls kicked in. It's okay though, because um VT two is a lot better, so it's fine. You'll just say you'll see reuse of both calibers. You'll see some of one and some of the other. Um that's shitty though. That's like really shitty. <laughs> He, he overall he has a lot less time to play with VT1. Jodan Sokutogeri, that's donkey kick. Reduce the opponent's knockback distance. That's actually good for Ryu. That means he can chase it in a little bit, but it also means he gets less corner carry. Increase the forward travel distance during the move. That'll make it look more like the actual donkey kick and less like some weird, weird thing that they programmed. That'll just make it visually better. Uh, and it'll make a it'll give some corner carry back in, so it's still good. You'll recover closer to the opponent. Ease the combo count. You can do more of them. That's good. This is uh this is actually these are nice buffs. You might be able to do ex donkey kick into back roundhouse into another donkey kick, for example, or something like that. Um, this is this is Ryu's, Ryu's overall pretty buffed, but VT1 got it nerfed. But like Ryu's overall probably better. Um, knee bash forward throw, damage one ten to one twenty. Uh, that makes me a little nervous since it's actually you know. He has decent reward off of landing it. One frame recovery after the throw, so now even his fake uh, throw loop is gone, probably. So Ken can't actually truly throw loop, I think. But if you hit a button, he can grab the button before it becomes active. So like if you do a wrestle jab, he can grab the jab. But if you do, if you don't do a wrestle jab, then his throw whiffs, like that kind of thing. He has like a fake throw loop off of in the corner, I think. And this probably just removed it because I think it's only a fake throw loop on four frame normals. And now all lights should be able to wake up and not get thrown. So this is like bad for Ken, but good for everyone else. Uh, more damage on throw. Standing light punch nerfed as an ATR. Crouching light punch pushed back on hit slightly decreased. That's a buff. Push back on block slightly decreased. Also, mm, yeah, still a buff because it's plus on block. I think almost all crouch jabs are. Reduced the upwards hit box. I didn't know that Ken's ever anti-aired with crouch light punch, but whatever. Uh, that's all good. Ken can, can crouch light punch isn't a button that Ken really hits that much. He usually hits stand jab rather than crouch jab. So these are some reasons to actually hit crouch jab. They're the same speed and I think stand jab goes a little farther and stand jab definitely has better follow ups. I think you can do stand jab into medium tatsu and you can't do crouch jab into medium tatsu, something like that. There's something where you can only do it from stand jab. Um does he still have stand jab back strong? He does, right? That's still a thing. 
but you can do that from crutch jab. Uh, crutch like kick, increase the pushback on hit, that's a nerf. Quick step, damage reduced. Uh oh, that's bad. Stun reduced. Added flip value for airborne hit. So now if you get anti-air step kick, you can probably do DP. Right now, I think you can do EX DP. Maybe only in V-Trigger. I don't remember when that's possible. It might take uh, corner, it might take uh, V-Trigger. But maybe now he can get anti-air. Maybe he can do like stand medium kick, stand hard kick, uh, quick step DP, or something like that. Or like back strong, back fierce, quick step DP. He might have like, he might have, he looks like he has a new juggle there, which is actually pretty good and warrants the damage nerf. This probably overall makes it a stronger attack. Because right now you just do target combo into fucking, you know, juggle. You don't even have the V skill. But now you'd have the V skill and the juggle, so that means more V meter and also more damage. Ease the combo count. Yeah, so you have a better juggle state. Expand the collision box only when performed from Chinbuster's second cancel. So that means it probably is a little bit more consistent when you're picking up, like, uh, uh, air juggles into back strong fierce, the whiff back strong fierce, stuff like that. Um, the CC nerfs are going to hurt. The CC nerfs are going to remove, like, probably between 10 and 30 damage from crush counter punishes and probably between 10 and 20 damage from uh, crush counters in neutral. So they're they're going to make crush counters weaker. I mean, I'm sure you can ease the combo count. I don't know what that means. It means that it's easier to juggle after it, but like, what can you even juggle into from medium sure you can? Like, what's there? Oh, that might mean that it's easier to juggle into medium sure you can, actually. You might be able to do like fucking light DP, medium DP, fucking VT2 or some nonsense like that. I don't know what that means for ease the combo count. I don't know what that means before or after. It's probably before. It probably means it's easier to juggle into medium DP. So I'm guessing you have medium DP as an alternative for hard DP in a lot of juggles now. I'm going to go through every character. I'm not going to skip shit. Yeah, sure you can change so it hits opponents who are behind Ken. So that means it's an actual good anti-air even if they're jumping over you. You can see that Akuma's already does this and Ryu's does too. So it's nice that Ken's now does it. Um, they both have like a hitbox like behind the head so that if the opponent is jumping over but only barely jumping over Ryu and Akuma get like one hit and then the opponent falls out Ken didn't have this and now he does expanded the collision boxes for the first shore you want to hit making it harder for the opponent to fall behind Ken during the mid-air hit okay so now I'm guessing if he gets that first hit he probably gets the whole thing so that's actually like a pretty big buff that means anti-air EXDP is a, big, is a real thing uh, it's already a real thing but you've got to scope the distance really carefully and now you can probably just do it this is like not a huge deal because Ken's medium DP is a fantastic anti-air, but having another option is really good, especially a stronger option with like, you know, I think has faster startup too, and more horizontal range without having less uh, horizontal range backwards. Shinryu can ease the combo count. You might have a new juggle here because right now you can juggle it after everything, but you only get, I think, EX Tatsu mid-screen or hard DP in corners. Maybe you can do like a light DP afterwards now. To reduce Tata's off the knockback distance for max button press version. Yeah, you could probably have Shinryu can into like light DP into fucking hard DP or something like that. You probably have some kind of juggle here now. Damage reduced from 200 to 180 for max button press. This is These are all big buffs to Shinryu can if it's working the way I think it is. It looks like you have much better juggles here. This looks like it's going to add a new thing that you can do afterwards. Oh, Ken will be in normal throw range after crutch light punch. That's good. That's a big, that's a big deal. If you can do crutch light punch and then an immediate throw. That will frame trap the opponent very easily. Not having to move is very, very advantageous there. Makes it easy to do and it makes it hard to deal with. Setting light punch and standing medium punch. Reduced the upwards hitbox, so they nerfed her anti-air punches. They were already kind of bad. Forward throw, change the distance from the opponent after a throw. She might be a little closer to them, seeing as they didn't change the damage. Rong Kyaku, that's the B-skill. Can be performed from cancel. I've been saying this! I've been saying this! I was like, Chun-Li, V-skill, is nearly useless right now. It's only useful for like meaty setups where you can get like the like the real or fake, like the down medium kick meaty kind of stuff. Um, this is this is big. This means you can actually do like the V skill into stomp combo in a real match because right now it's very shitty. Uh, but uh, now if you can if you can confirm into it, dude, if you can do like jump roundhouse back fierce V skill, you can actually that will probably be pretty strong. And also it's it builds V meter. You get V-meter from the Ron Kyaku hitting, uh, and you don't get V-meter from coming down, attacking and coming down from it. 
only 80 instead of 100, but that's that 100 is basically zero, because unless the opponent's dizzy, you're not going to hit a rank calculator. It's like very situational, where it's actually functional and useful. This is a huge buff. Uh, Yos Yoku Sen Kyaku. I think that's towards hard kick. Decrease the advantage on crush counter from plus 19 to plus 18. Re recovery increased on whiff from 13 to 18 frames. Yeah, I think this is towards hard kick, and that's a pretty big nerf. Right now, it's one of the best crush counters in the game, to be honest. It's very slow, but, you know. Um, but if you towards hard kick, it's going to be a lot easier to whiff punish. Five frames is a big deal. That's a really big deal. And then, um, right now, I think she can do dash and low forward into light tots, I mean, light uh, Hyaku Ritsu Kyaku, and then like a stand jab, light bird kick, or something like that. This means she's only going to be able to do, I think it's plus five, I mean, uh, plus six on four dash right now, and it's going down to plus five. But it might be five and going down to four. And if it's five and going down to four, then that means she has to do dash and crutch jab, stand strong, low forward. So that's like even worse, because that has a smaller effective range. You don't have to be point blank to get stand strong low forward, but you do have to be point blank to get crush jabs stand strong low forward. And it also adds some scaling, so. Um, this is big nerfs to that normal, but that's fine, because it was a pretty good normal. And it's still going to be good. Um, you can still like space it so it hits deep, and it's only minus two on block, so just don't whiff it. <laughs> just, do, just do it so it hits. Kikosho change to the hitbox for the second Hanwards will not disappear when Kikosho collides with the opponent's projectile. I didn't know that. It just goes away if you hit a projectile at all. I didn't know that. You don't. It's not like you use Kikoshin and LFI projectiles, so whatever. Um. This is good. These are these are overall Chun Li is buffed. Overall Ken is probably buffed. They're like trying to make the bad VT twos better. That's really nice to see. Extended to her upwards hip, her box while crouching. That makes me happy because Kimmy is the smallest character in the game while crouching, I think. So now she's a little bit taller. That means you can actually, you know, um, certain characters, if their jump normals are done too early, she just crouches under them and stuff. That's not a huge deal. It's not going to affect very much. I don't think she low profiles anything. Stun, 900 to 950. That's a big buff. It doesn't sound like a big buff, but it is. That's um, it's easy that you won't have anymore. That's like times where you would have gotten stunned where you'll now be able to maybe sneak in a beer reverse at the last second. These that's like a nice buff. Forward throw, damage up, stun up, stun down. Never mind. Delta throw, delta through. That's almost certainly a mistranslation, right? Um, damage up. Kimmy has really good frame traps and uh her throws are a thing that she only does to make her frame traps work. So making the throws stronger is nice for her. Crouch light kick Push back on hit, that's good for everyone but Kami. Lift upper, that's back strong. Can be cancelled from during Delta Ambush and Delta Step while V Trigger 2 is active. Oh, you know, that might be the TC. That might not be back strong by itself, that might be the back strong TC. This must mean that she can do back strong Stamina House into BT2. Because I think she can already do back strong into BT2. It might be that you can do VT2 into... No, that doesn't make any sense. Back strong. But how would you do that from the air one? Um, yeah, this is this is, this is is probably going to make VT2 better. This seems like a good buff to VT2. If you can do that TC and then do the uh, air one. Oh, it is just back medium punch? What the fuck does that mean? She can already do that. She can't? I thought you could... What? That's not a thing. You can do back medium punch into VT1, can't you? Oh, no, it doesn't work. Do oh, no, it does work. That's weird. I didn't know that. Okay, that's just a bug fix. Fuck that. That's not even anything interesting. That's not even useful. The only button worth shit to cancel into VT2 is Crutch Fierce, and that's not even good. Light Cannon Spike. That's the uppercut. Invincible from airborne attacks from 1 to 6. That's an 8 tier buff. I guess they felt bad about Lift Upper being nerfed. Um... That's fine. That's okay. So I'm guessing what happened here is that she just gets the TC when she tries to do VT2, right? Because you're doing hard punch plus hard kick. There's a command overlap issue, I'm guessing. Um, This is this is a buff, but it's... Well, no, yeah, this is a buff. Kemi c could already do anti-air light cannon spike, but she had to... It's not very invincible. I, I don't know if it has any invincibility at all except for throws. So you had to do it really early and rely on the good hitbox. And the hitbox is pretty good, but... um. Having invincibility is a lot better because it means you can do it later 
and doing it later means you can do it easier on reaction, and it also means that you can do it in more scenarios. The invincibility is really nice. So upper body invincibility on light cannons like, makes her close anti a lot better. That's like a big deal. V cannon spike, that's the uh, V trigger one. And cancel into V cannon strike on hit. So DP and then dive kick? And then I'm guessing you can probably do an EX DP from there. I don't know. That's pretty wild. So that means you'd start with the uppercut. So that might be good if you get like low forward activate or something like that where you don't have as good of options. That means you can do like... Um, I, I doubt this would be as strong as drill into uppercut, but it might be stronger. If you get like low forward activate, you can do uppercut into dive. That might be strong. Like that might be good. We'll have to wait and see. Or like anti-air uppercut into dive into like maybe an EXDP from there. But this this, this little cancel should use up all of your meat meter, V meter. So um, I don't see it being used that much, but it might be good for like certain stuff. I have to see what the follow-ups are, if there are follow-ups at all. VT2, number of V-trigger blocks reduced from 3 to 2. Okay, so you can get it out sooner. That was like everyone's number one complaint with this, besides the risk you were taking, is that it was way too expensive for Kami's low-ass health. Um, that's good. That's like a really, really big buff. The V-trigger time will be completely consumed upon using the special moves Delta Step and Delta Ambush. Never mind. That's not that good. So this is, um... This is the... What is this, actually? <laughs> this is just... this is You only get one. You don't get two. So you get one jump into overhead, or one jump into grab, or one dash. That's it, huh? That's You get one pop. Well, make it work. Yeah, that's like Ibuki. Ibuki would rather have the, um, even discounting the um, uh, different juggles, uh, Ibuki would rather have the shuriken than the bomb for like the same reason. Delta twist? I don't know what the fuck that is. That's probably the air throw, I guess. I don't know. Expanded the downward hit hurt box. Okay, no, I have no idea. That could be anything. Reverse edge? What are these attacks? Damage increase from 70 to 80? What is this? Second attack will be considered a mid attack? Huh? Oh, these are the follow ups from. Are these the follow ups from uh, VT2? So she's easier to anti air. And also, uh, the the this is probably the VT2 kick. Yeah. Damage increased from 70 to 80. Second attack is considered a mid, that means an overhead in Street Fighter speak. Um, so that's that's annoying. It's not it's like not really a buff because if someone blocks they're probably still blocking. The recovery on block will be the same as on hit. Oh, that's a that's that's a big deal. Wait, time out. Recovery on block will be the same as on hit? That's a big deal. That means she might be safe. Yeah, oh no. Recovery on block decreased from minus eleven to minus five. Okay, still punishable, but that minus five is a lot better. Minus five means that you don't eat like a full combo. If you're minus eleven, you eat like Akuma crutch for your stand forward, and if you're minus five, you eat Akuma stand forward. If you're minus five, you eat birdie swing jab. That's that's like better. That's like a pretty big buff. Active frames one F and two F will be able to hit grounded opponents. Okay. Okay, VT two buffs galore. It looks like VT one didn't really change. She got a new juggle. And then uh, overall, uh, little little buffs. Extra stun, um, and all ADP. That's nice. Nice little Kami changes. Uh, I've seen Bison players anti air with Crouch Light Punch on certain characters. People used to say Laura is good for Laura. So they probably don't want anyone doing anti air Crouch Jab. Crouch Hard Punch made it taller. It was already tall as shit. I can't even imagine. Oh, upwards her box. So that might make it easier to trade with. That might be a nerf. I mean, that's definitely a nerf, but I don't know how significant that is. It might still work as an ATR, but it might be shittier in uh, neutral. He might not be considered crouching while doing it. Because, like, if you, like, 
There are certain moves that are flagged to not hit crouching, like Guile towards Fierce, even if they're really tall, like Abigail. Um, so this might make it so he can be hit by buttons like that while doing Crouch Fierce. He might be considered standing. So I don't know if this is actually affecting his anti-air capabilities or not. We'll have to wait and see. Probably not, knowing that they want to keep anti-air as consistent. Psycho Impact, forward throw, better damage. Via Rissle is a little bit slower. 17 frames is like, that's not a very significant change at all. EX double knee press, when the second it connects in a non-lock situation, can cancel to Psycho Crusher and Psycho Judgment. So now he can do, uh, let's say, uh, Inferno. What do you call that? Uh, hard Inferno into EX Scissor Kick, which is a combo that already works, but the EX Scissor Kick doesn't hit properly, right? And now he can do that into Psycho Crusher. That's pretty cool. That's a buff. Um, there's a little stuff that's going to change with that. Nothing super duper significant, but like little stuff. Psycho Judgment, ease the combo count. That's the... the hell is that? Is that the Command Grab? Is that the Explosion? What the fuck is that? I don't know what Psycho Judgment is. Psycho Crusher, damage increased when lower body portion hits from 70 to 100. That's just higher damage. That's pretty good. Bison overall, slightly, 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 slightly buffed. I don't know. This this is all... Yeah, that new juggle is pretty nice. This is this is okay. It's just VT2 Bison got a smidge better. And regular Bison got a smidge... Maybe worse. He's, like, unchanged. Um, Ease the combo cut almost certainly refers to juggling rather than scaling. That means it's easier to pick up a juggle. It's a, it's a note about JP. It means that you can do follow-ups, usually. Or rather, it's uh, you can do stuff into that. Ease the combo count usually means... If like they ease the combo count and uppercut, it usually means you can juggle into the uppercut more easily. I think. But it's like a note about juggling. It's like stupid direct translation of fucking shit Japanese people say. Mm. Forward throw stronger. And better stun. Backward throw stronger. Then medium kick change so it will not hit opponents who are behind Nash. Only for the base hitbox. Well, that's a nerf. Say medium kick is actually a functional anti-air. It's not great, but it works. Um, and now they're making it so it's not as good of an anti-air. He can still do like hard kick or low strong, so it's not a big deal. It's not like he's lacking for close anti-airs. We have to combination and bullet combination. I think that's light kick, light punch, and... Or light punch, medium punch, and light kick, medium kick. Increase the forward movement distance of the second hit. So this looks like it's going to make it more consistent. This might mean that you can do low short, stand jab, stand strong, which is a nice little combo if it worked. Um, and it might also mean you can do like stand short, stand forward, stand jab, stand strong, or like something like that. You might have some new juggles here. It's just going to make it so if you get the stand jab, you're going to get the stand strong more often. And same with the light kick and the medium kick. So those are both like pretty big buffs. Bullet clear. Increase the advantage on hit from plus two to plus five. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Now you can pick up a combo. You can do stand jab into, I mean, V skill into, into, uh, back, back forward, right? That's five frames. V skill, back medium kick into hard Sonic Scythe might actually be a uh, punish you might go for. That's, um, I mean, maybe not a punish. I don't know what it is on block. I don't think it's, I think it's like zero on block. But this gives you some V meter. This gives you an option of using. Oh, Raptor and Bullet Combinations, the MK into a hard kick. All right, let me reread this. Okay, that's nothing. <laughs> um, That's just making the combo more consistent. So I'm guessing Raptor is ending in medium kick and Bullet is ending in V-Skill. So that just means that they really want you to use that TC. Like, really badly, they want you to use that TC. That is like a TC that they've done everything in their power to make you use it. Uh, it's probably the go-to follow-up after um, Crouch Hard Punch, maybe. It depends. It really depends, because you might just want to do, like, you know, stand strong into hard Sonic Scythe. That's still, like, a good follow-up. Um, plus five isn't going to... I mean... <laughs> uh, oh, for this one? Um, yeah, I guess. You're probably going to be closer to the opponent at the end of things. So the Oki should theoretically be better. I don't know what it is now, to be honest. Sonic move high. That's straight across, I think. I think that's the one that just teleports you while staying on the ground. Though, and projectile invincible from frames 1 to 3. 
So you can do it as a true reversal against throws, and you can do it as a true reversal against projectiles. So right now, he's invincible already, once he disappears, to like everything, I think. Um, but he can't do it as a... He can't do it as a reversal. If he does, like, wake up BT, and uh, the opponent does, like, meaty stand strong or something, he just gets hit. He gets counter hit. But, well, he still will. But now if they throw, he'll disappear instead of getting thrown. Now if there's a projectile on top of him, he'll disappear instead of eating the projectile. So this is, like, this is, this is like, slightly better. This just gives him an easier time actually using the BT. Justice Corridor will not be able to perform Stealth Dash on Whiff. So this is Justice Corridor, Corridor's VT2. Is that the VT2 Ground Pound? Can he do VT2 Ground Pound with it and then do another like dash? I didn't know that. It's interesting. Change the behavior when Nash overtakes the opponent character. So I'm guessing the side swap. There's something new that happens, but that was that was too big. Um. Okay, Vega. Vega changes. I'm surprised. We actually have like every character. Forward throw stronger, back throw stronger, then light punch and crutch light punch, reduce the upper body upwards hitbox. Oh, great, they removed a Vega anti air. V skill attack, can cancel the CA on block. That's. I didn't know that wasn't already true. Did he have like a. He had like an OS there. If you could do CA on hit but not block, that means you could just always buffer the CA. And if it hits, you do the CA, and if you block, you get nothing. So that's like a nerf, if that's how it worked. Increase the distance at which it triggers the opponent's blocking motion. That means the opponent shifts from a uh, walk into a block from further away, which is technically a buff, I guess. Increase the pushback on block. That makes it harder to punish. This is a relatively good poke, apart from the very long startup. It attacks from pretty retardedly far away, to be honest. Um, so increasing the pushback, it's like pretty minus, I think. So increasing the pushback makes it more usable. It means it's a lot harder to punish. This is like overall better, I guess. It depends on how far it pushes back. Bloody kiss, bloody kill, Torero and Azul. I don't know how the fucking Spanish works. So those are the rose tosses, and they're getting a big damage buff. So now I can't make that big a video because now they're actually addressing it. So they actually reduce the damage of the rose toss. Like they added a follow up and reduced the damage, but with the follow up, it did less damage than it used to do naturally before. So, um, uh, technically speaking, they gave it a follow-up, but it became worse. And now it's going to be better. Now, uh, Rose Toss into, like, Sweep, or Rose Toss into Towards Fierce, or Rose Toss into EX, Flying Barcelona, is actually significantly better than what he had in Season 2. Like Crimson Terror, expanded the forward hitbox for the first hit. That's an amazing buff. If it's, It depends on how far it goes. But that is theoretically an amazing buff. That's like a huge buff. If it means he can do like crutch jab, stin, jab, low strong into light crimson terror on a in no claw. Um he right now he has like a little range. If he's a certain distance away, he has no way to combo into like anything. <laughs> Especially on a crouching opponent where he can't do EX flying Barcelona. So this gives him an actual like combo to go into. So that's like a really big buff. But that's that's if it actually goes that far. Yeah, X Flying Barcelona adjusts the input window. Right now you have to do Flying Barcelona follow-ups really, really early. They're probably making it to be a more reasonable number, more reasonable timing. Flash Arch Rosa. That's probably the follow-up, or maybe the parry. It's probably the follow-up. Address the phenomenon where the attack would not connect after a successful parry. I've never seen that, but I believe it. It's good that they're actually, they're probably making it lock down or something, lock in. Fix a state where Vega would re retain invincibility upon returning to a neutral state after the attack included. That's a thing. Vega could keep the invincibility somehow. That's hilarious. Um, these are buffs. And this is a big buff. Vega's VTs both got a lot better. So that's nice. And Light Crimson Terror is actually theoretically a really big buff, provided it actually goes somewhere. It depends. It depends on how much it's actually increasing. It might be a big deal. The damage buffs are okay. None of this is super, super good. Like Vega's like maybe bottom like three. And none of this is like, uh, none of this is, none of this is amazing, but it's all quality of life stuff and it all, it's all, it's all, a lot of these are actual tier adjusting, but they're not going to move them into like high tier. I don't even, I don't even think they'll move them into mid. They might, I don't know. 
Big is a weird character. Forward throw, damage better. Stay medium kick and medium punch. Ease the combo count. That probably means you can juggle into both of them. So you can probably do like hard blast into stay medium kick or stay medium punch. I don't know why you would do that when hard kick is there. Or maybe like you can do it after like a BT2 combo or something. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But that means you can juggle into those two normals, which is cool. Um, Crimson Terror is like the combo under, theoretically, if you don't have meter. That's that's good. You know that. It's It should knock down, dude. <laughs> it should actually knock down. Change t so the move can be performed using down forward and down back diagonal direction inputs. That's just quality of life, I guess. I tend to use down back whenever I'm doing like air stuff, unless the game literally makes me. I think Chun-Li needs a straight down for her down medium kicker. She used to. I don't think she does now. Um, or like uh, all the dive kicks. Like uh, uh, I think uh, Nikali's needs a straight down. That's just that doesn't actually matter. Fuck dev notes. Yoga Mala via rare startup increased sixteen to seventeen, almost a non-factor. Yoga Gale applied the combo count limit. So does that mean you can't juggle after Yoga Gale? Is that what I'm reading here? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Crimson Terror has good Oki if it knocks down, but Light Crimson Terror does not knock down. So changes to Light Crimson Terror are not going to affect the Oki. Neutral Medium Punch, Neutral Medium Kick, and Air Combos, and all juggling when Yoga Fire hits an opponent in the air. Oh, so Anti-Air, Yoga Fire, into Stand Medium Punch. That's quite good. To open up new situations that were never possible before in long-range battles. That's, that's a nice little buff. Oh, Yoga Burner, I didn't read this one. Increase the float on hit. Increase the horizontal blowback distance on hit. Does that mean... Increase the float means more time to juggle. What's Yoga Burner? I thought that was his VT1. What the hell is this? No. What is his VT1? Good lord. Whatever. Zangi standing hard punch on charge. Change the timing for cancel to BT2. He might lose an OS or something, or he might gain an OS. Or I shouldn't even say OS. He might gain a reaction. You might be able to do stand fierce... And on reaction to it hitting go to VT2, or you might lose that. I don't know if he can already do that, but it, they're going to change whether it's possible. Okay, that was carpet. So that sounds like you could maybe do carpet into stand medium punch, or carpet into stand medium kick. That's what that sounds like. Oh yeah, it could just take longer to knock down. Increase the horizontal blowback distance on hit sounds bad. It sounds like it's going to throw the opponent further back, which makes them have an easier time getting off the carpet. Yoga, yoga Flame is the half circle. Hold on, I gotta sneeze. Um, flying Headbutt, that's up plus Fierce, I think. Reduce stun from 400 to 200, no more instant touch of stun combos on Akuma. Change the hit effect from blowback to mid-air unrecoverable damage. What? Okay, so I think what's happening here is instead of being air reset, you now get juggled. I think that's what's going on here. Can that be cancelled? Yeah, so I'm guessing that you can do some variety of, I don't know, maybe like crush counter, stay in roundhouse or something, and then VT2 activate, and then jump up fierce, and then air SPD, air EX SPD. Something like that. Increase the pushback distance on hit for via reversal. That's good for everyone but Geef. Increase pushback on blocks. That's still good for everyone but Geef. The opponent's stun gauge will not recover during animation lock. What the fuck is Thunderstorm? Is that the parry? Yeah, I think that's the parry. So that means that the opponent won't start recovering their stun while you're fucking parrying them. So that means, I don't know, some stuff that would have not par uh, dizzied will now dizzy. EX Borsh Dynamite, that's the EX Air SPD, I think. Added a cancel specific action. That's. That's vague. Change the effect of Flying Headbutt to make it cancelable. These changes allow Zangief to juggle the opponents with EX Borsh Dynamite after hitting mid air opponent with Flying Headbutt. So if you neutral jump Headbutt and they get hit, 
then you get an EXO area SPD. So it's not a juggle into it. It's just, well, it is a juggle into it, but it's just from raw headbutt. There's no, like, super juggle into it. So this is a pretty big buff for VT2 Zangief if you're running VT2 Zangief. Oh, no, not even that. That's not a buff. This is just a buff to just... Well, it is a buff to VT2 Zangief, but it's just a buff to Zangief. That's not a big deal. Zangief already has pretty good anti airs, but, like, neutral jumping as an anti air is kind of more of a hard read. It's, like, something that's kind of hard. It's situationally. Um... You have to do it really, really fast. If You have to be kind of close to the opponent to do it with a neutral jump. And you have to do it uh, very early. Whereas Zangief can normally do like a late uh, SP, uh, late Lariat or a late, I don't know, jab or something like that. Um, so this will give him a shit ton of damage. But it's a worse option in every other way. But overall, this might be a nerf or a buff, I don't know. This is definitely a nerf in other scenarios. Because you're not going to get that neutral jump up fierce that often as an anti-air. And you're going to get it a lot after like a... Or during a punish combo. Or during a dizzy follow-up. And there you're going to lose a ton of stun on the punish. Dizzy won't matter. Um, so this is like... This is, this is overall probably bad. But it has a situation of being really good. And then this is a nerf, and then this is a buff, I guess, but it's a hard move to use. And then, I don't know about this one. So Geef looks overall. If Slamman says Geef is worse, Geef is worse. That's cool, though. It's going to do a shit ton of damage, to be honest. Up Fierce into EX, Borscht Dynamite. That's going to do an ass ton of damage and stun. So it's like, wow, that's going to be, that's going to be, you know, rewarding if you get it. Throw damage buffs, Kareen gets fuck all after a throw. So, you know. A little stronger. Jumping hard punch reduced the hurt box, so now I guess it's easier. It's harder to anti air with a jab or something. Probably just harder to anti air in general. Probably won't be a huge deal. Most anti air should still anti air it. Resencho via wrestle. Increase the horizontal blowback distance on a hit. So it's just going to throw the opponent farther away. That's good, I guess, if you want to not get dizzied. Um. Ryu is a lot better, actually, but Ryu's VT1 is probably worse, but Ryu's VT2 is pretty significantly buffed, so it's pick your poison. Uh, Gurin Kusabi. Change the attack active frames from 8 frame to 11. God, I don't know all of her fucking VT1 follow-ups. I don't even know if this is VT1. I don't know what the fuck Gurin Kusabi is. Help me out. Reckon my brain for attacks with that name. Is that a normal? VT1 slide follow up. I I guess it's, you can technically do that after the uh um after the Resenha too. Uh so this is it slides longer, which is a tiny tiny buff, and it recovers faster, which is a tiny tiny buff. It looks like it'll probably still be full combo punishable, so um that's not a big deal. Oh, you know, this is um this makes it so she can actually do Tenko into Rekka's into down punch into down kick. This makes it more consistent. Because right now that's kind of tight. So this is just bringing that combo to the people. This is like a buff, but it's not a huge deal. It's making it's taking something possible and making it easier. Mayoken, charge version included. On charge version, damage decreased from 60 to 50. That's uh, a nerf. <laughs> charge version, damage decreased from 80 to 70. Also a nerf. Charge version, v G what the fuck? They made it a lot worse. Ease the combo count. Okay, it might be there might be a new ender. Maybe she can do Tenko Tenko Mayoken in the corner. That's actually really cool if that works. I mean I'd rather do EX Rasenha, but if you can do Tenko Tenko Mayoken, that's actually like a good ender. Or Tenko like Mujin Kalku Mayoken. If that works in the corner, that's that's kinda cool. That actually justifies all these nerfs. So this is a lot worse than neutral, but it's gonna it's probably it should have a new juggle state a new place where you can juggle into it. So that's going to mean more V-meter building, which is not a big deal on Kareen because I don't think her V-triggers are that good. EX Tenko, damage decreased from 120 to 100. Ouch, that's kind of bad. EX Orochi, damage increased from 120 to 140. A damage uh, change of 20 is pretty significant. So a damage increase... EX Tenko is a lot easier to land than EX Orochi, so this is overall... Both of these are worse. But this means EX Orochi combos are actually going to be pretty beefy now. Um, but EX Tenko, you'd rather have the damage on Tenko than Orochi, so this is, like, bad. 
This means her mid-screen one-bar combos are going to be a lot worse. Well, not a lot worse, but, like, worse. Less worth the bar. Probably not usually worth the bar at all. It depends. It's free damage. I think there's no other ender there, right? Light Mujin Kalku. Or Light Tenku. Instant Tenko, Light Mujin Kalku into nothing. Or into EX Tenko. Yeah, I'd probably... That's still that's still okay. That's still good. Still situationally worth. But it used to be a really good one-bar follow-up, and now it probably will be just a regular one. Orochi is the shoulder. Yasha Gaishi Tenchi. That's probably the parry since it's last. Can be performed from cancelable moves. Technically speaking, if it's later, the bonus damage is getting scaled less. If it's 50% scaling, you're only losing 10 damage. But if it's, you know, 100% scaling, you're losing 20. This is less nerfed at the end of a combo and more nerfed at the start of a combo. Yasha Gaichi Tenshi can be performed from cancelable moves, so now you can do Stand Fierce into fucking... I don't know you'd ever do that. I can't think of anything you'd ever do. It's like nice that it's there, I guess, but I can't think of a... She doesn't have a cancelable move that's unsafe that she doesn't just cancel into Orochi, so this isn't a big deal. There might be something you can do with this. What if, like, the opponent via versus... You're like stand fierce and then you cancel to the parry. This is like a uh, oh yeah, Orochi's worse. If you're doing the ex tenko ex Orochi, if you're doing that full combo, then yeah, you're getting a net loss in damage. Um, this will give you some B reversal punishing stuff, but I can't think of anything good it does besides that. But that's kind of cool if you can use it to punish B reversals. Reduced recovery by five frames for situations where the counter was successfully triggered but the attack did not hit. That's nice, but really what they should have done is add a lock-in so that the, <laughs> the attack always hits. Reduce the damage for the grounded version from 120 to 100. I don't know what it means by the grounded version. One of them knocks over and one of them doesn't. The other one that crumples. So I'm guessing this is the one that crumples. This is overall... I need to see. I don't know if this is overall worse. Little damage buffs. Um, more blowback distance, that's bad. Maybe. It's, like, good and bad. Um, that's bad, but not super significant. Um, this is... This is not really good or bad. This is maybe good, but it's gonna hurt it in neutral. This is bad, but this is just a little bit good. I mean, this is objectively good, but, like, overall, this is bad. And this is good I think I don't know this is I don't think Kareen's gonna move up or down off of these overall she's more buff but the nerfs are a bigger deal but she's got more buffs these are I don't know Kareen's Kareen's not gonna change too much despite the fact that her list is pretty long none of these are really significant changes the Mayo Kim will probably change her combos a little bit Armika, crunching medium punch. Increase the horizontal blowback distance for midair hit. So this means she doesn't get a 50-50 off of a successful anti-air, which is fucking amazing. This is a nerf to Mika, but it's a buff to the game. <laughs> um, hard shooting Peach, change the performance when performed as a cancel from Lady Mika. So I think that right now towards Fierce into hard shooting Peach doesn't juggle, or it like hits in a weird way. So now it's probably going to hit in a more normal way. I don't know if it's going to give you like an ender from it. But right now, I don't know what the fuck happens. I think it falls out. I thought it fell out. So this is probably going to make it... I don't know. If you're doing Lady Mika on hit, you'd rather go into the... Well, this keeps the corner. I was going to say uh, you'd rather go into the, the core circle forward kick. But this will be an ideal corner ender. This might be okay. I don't know. It depends. Maybe you'll do like uh, hard shooting... Maybe you'll do Lady Mika into Lady Mika into, into hard shooting Peach in the corner now. Instead of Lady Mika into Lady Mika into low strong. I don't know. It depends on how it works. Rainbow Typhoon, that's one of the command grabs. I don't know which one. It looks like the one that changes sides, the punch one. Got a damage buff. That's good. That's objectively useful. Um, Big-ish nerf. Maybe a good buff. We'll have to wait and see. Tiny buff. Mika's not going to change that much. Bad Skull. Stun decreased by 50, that's pretty significant. Crouch medium punch, active frames reduced from 6 to 5, almost insignificant. Recovery increased from 15 to 16. That might hurt his ability to go for follow-ups after a successful anti-air. 
Um, not a super big deal for either of those. Crouch Hard Kick increased the disadvantage on block from minus 11 to minus 14. So that's... Um, um, a lot worse. Birdie Sweep is really big. So uh, at a lot of ranges, even though it's always minus 14, if you're like at max max range, a lot of characters can't cover that distance in 14 frames. and Or 11 frames. And if it's minus 14, it's going to be a lot easier to pick up. Like, I don't think Gal has like a punish from like max range outside of maybe EX Boom. But if, he, if it's minus 14, that means he can do like Reversal Stand Hard Kick or something like that. See what I'm saying? He's gonna have. There's gonna be more consistent punishes on that, because right now it's one of the safest sweeps in the game, provided your max range. Whoa! I got a little. Who is it? Boobiba. He like invites me all the time. I don't even know who that is. Crouching hard kick increases increase the disadvantage on block. Oh, I just read that. Fuck. Uh, expanded the hurt box after the active frames end, so easier to punish. Delayed the timing at which the post-active frames her box disappears. It makes it easier to punish. Increased pushback on block makes it harder to punish. I don't know what the fuck they're going for here. That's weird. Uh, Gal should be able to critical art it on block. Easy peasy. Gal's critical art is like 5 frames mid-screen. Pepper Pop via Reversal Startup increased from 16 to 17. That's fine. They really looked at Brady's entire tool set and they were like, the thing that's broken here is Crutch Hard Kick. It's like one of the only things that's fair. Nakali, stand light punch and crutch light punch. Reduce the upper hitbox. This is one of the better anti-air jabs. I know it's worse, but it's okay because Nakali has a good DP. Forward throw, damage increase. Back throw, damage increased. Nakali has like the lowest throw damage in the whole game. But the thing about Nakali is that if he's in V-Trigger, he actually has like true Oki off of both forward and back throw. And that's true for like no other character. So you actually just get like real ass meaties off of any throw. So it's it makes sense that they're weak as fuck. Valiant Rebellion, that's the, um, command? No. What the hell is that? Blowback on counter hit was changed to be the same as the regular version. Is that the overhead? What the hell is this? Help me out. Valiant Rebellion. Is that the... Stomp? Okay, it is the stomp. Blowback on counter hit was changed to be the same. I didn't know it was different. I didn't know that he it pushed back farther or less far on counter hit. Oops, I didn't know. Blow on counter hit was changed to be the same as the regular version. Blow back on hit changed to be the same as the regular version. Oh, so this means he might lose his neat little VT combos. Because right now you can do, I think, um, what is it? Low strong, medium stomp, low strong, medium stomp. Or like something like that. Stand strong, medium stomp, low strong, medium stomp. I think it is. He has like a little tiny. He can get two stomps in the same combo in V trigger only. And that might not be possible if the pushback is the same as the regular version. So this might be a little nerf. It's not going to be a huge nerf, but it's a little nerf. Pushback on hit for second hit slightly decreased. That's really good. That means I think he's plus two on a successful EX Valiant Rebellion. So this is like a... He's plus two in close. So that's like really good for him because he's got a command grab and he's got good mix-ups and stuff. First hit can be cancelled to V-Trigger. That's pretty nice, actually. That means you can do like a... Yeah, I don't know. Empty cancel, stand short, EX stomp, and then V-Trigger from there. Or just any empty cancel on TX stomp and then V trigger from there. That probably won't be super useful, but it will be that will be one of his V trigger activate combos. People will definitely go for that shit. EX Valiant Rebellion V trigger push back the same or on second hit slightly decrease, same change. Yes, the disc disc's guidance. I think that's the dash. One fifty to one fifty. They increased the damage on the last hit. Oh no, they decreased the damage on the last hit. So that means um, he's going to do less damage when going through fireballs, but it's going to do the same damage on uh, regular connect. So this is it's not a huge change. Stun distribution changed from 200 to 200. Again, he's losing all the dam all the stun on the second hit. So this is it's a nerf to going through fireballs. Yeah, dive kick jab ex stomp vt. That's going to be really good. I forgot about that. I was trying to think of situations where he only got a light, but there really aren't that many of them. Dive kick is like the main one. Low short. He gets more damage off a of low short, and he gets more damage off of a uh, dive kick, and that's like pretty much it. The second hit can be canceled to V trigger. Ooh, that's pretty nice. That I doubt that'll be damage optimal in any way. It's better actually if you're doing the damage distribution and the stun distribution are both better for that. So it's like a nerf overall to his 
going through fireballs, but it's a buff if you're going to V trigger. So you could do like, you know, the eighty damage of this. That's probably gonna be damage optimal. Right now you do like low strong into activate. Into like low forward or stand fierce or something like that. Like let's say if you do like, you know, crouch hard punch, medium stomp, low strong activate right now. But maybe after this you'll do like stand strong or stand fierce medium stomp crouch strong ex disguidance and then activate because that would actually that would actually be a rather significant increase to your damage i don't know if you'll actually go through with that but it's nice that you can do it increase the pushback on hit for the second hit uh oh your follow-ups are going to be a little weird clouded mirror that's the um i don't know what the fuck that is so all offering is, I think, the yell from VT2. Is Clouded Mirror the stomp? Increase the cancellation window when canceling from culminated power and sacrificial altar. That sounds like the stomp. Pushback on block significantly decreased from max charge version. This is definitely the stomp. It might be the overhead, actually. No, culminated power is the V-skill, I think. And sacrificial altar is the target combo. So now you can probably do both of them into Clouded Mirror. And now the max charge one I think is plus, so if you make them block it, you have like a mix up maybe. So this is like big buffs to his VT1, which currently no one picks. Increase the active frames after landing the max charge version from four to seven. That's pretty nice. That means there's more frames where you can hit them and stuff. This is good. These are good changes. These are all little buffs. Nikali got little buffs. Rashido. Oh, f f 950 stun. That's weirdly relieving to read. Added two frames recovery after forward throw. Thank God. Fucking his forward throw in the corner was so stupid because of the run. Backward throw, stun decrease. Okay, so he's losing a lot of reward for his throws. Light kick, advantage on hit. Minus four to minus two. That's like, um, that's like bison. Now you don't have a combo from Stan Light Kick. Mm, that's a big nerf. That's his three frame normal. That means he can't do like stand short crutch jab into light mixer. That means if you're interrupting with crutch light kick, you have no ender unless you get counter hit. That's like a big that's a that's a pretty big deal. It's now a cancelable move. Okay, so you can cancel it straight away into light mixer. So right now you can do you can that means you can <laughs> right now you do stand short into low jab into uh nothing if it's blocked or something if it's uh if it, if it hits, you can go into like light mixer and mash it out. But now, he's just got to do stand light kick into light mixer immediately, and the light mixer is minus two on block. So this is like that's like a that's worse overall. Stand hard punch advantage on block now minus three. Thank fucking that's that's nice. That's not a huge change. Most Rashids don't let that move rock that much. I guess I don't know. They kind of do. It's I it can be canceled late. I think. I think you can do like a roll. You can do stand hard punch, react to whether a hitter was blocked, and then roll from there. He had like a like a kind of ghetto reaction ender from that, and now it's probably now it's harder to fish for that because it's worse on block, and you don't want to cancel it on block. That's not going to be a huge change though. Minus three just means it's your turn. You're probably not going to be able to punish a minus three from the ranges that Rashid's going to hit this button. Stand medium kick, recovery increased from 15 to 17 frames, so it's worse as a poke. Advantage on hit reduced from plus 2 to plus 1, so it's worse as a poke. Disadvantage on block decreased, or increased from minus 2 to minus 4. That means soccer can punish it with stand short, baby. Expanded the forward hitbox, so it's a bigger poke, but it's a lot worse. Um, crush medium kick, cancel timing for Ossifa delayed by 3 frames. So that means you might be able to reaction cancel into Asifa, maybe, I guess. Or it maybe it's just easier. I don't know. Need to see it. Crouch hard punch, reduce the recovery on the first hit on block from by three frames. So that means um if the second hit whiffs, then he probably has a lot more recovery. But if both hits connect, then it's gonna be the same. But he wants to space it so only the uh No, what does this mean? Reduce the recovery for the first hit on block by three frames. What the fuck does this mean? The first hit only? When do you ever only get the first hit of Crouch Hard Punch? You either get both hits or the second hit. Anti-air connect, maybe? <laughs> what is... What is? Someone help me out for this one. Oh, wait, they do? 
Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, yeah, okay. So it's if you cancel it straight away. I didn't think about canceling it. I'm dumb. If you do crouch hard punch into tornado, there's more of a window to No, because <laughs> I guess they're changing the blocks on it. It says reduce the recovery. But I guess they mean the recovery of the guy blocking it. Normally when they talk about reducing the recovery, they're talking about like the hard punch recovers faster. But here, the, you you don't have recovery when you cancel a move. It's just gone. That's the whole point of canceling. You're canceling the recovery. So I'm guessing it's like it's a change to blocks done. Flap spin that's towards strong, I think. Reduced the recovery the first hit on block by three frames. Probably also a change to... Uh, um, probably also a change to uh, cancels. Sped up the startup on the second hit by one frame. I don't know what that'll affect. That probably just makes it so it's like... So it still works properly on hidden block. So you can't interrupt it with buttons or something like that. Maybe if you didn't have... If you didn't have this, maybe you could like three frame jab in between the two hits or something. Wall jump. Increase the interval between clinging to the wall and jump by two frames. So now you can actually meet in midair a little easier. If you see Rashid jump to the wall and then stick to the wall, maybe you can do like jump hard kick and hit him. Be a little easier. Yeah, maybe a DP. Rather than a rather than a three frame jab. Make it so there's no one frame uh non true block string so the opponent can't EXDP through them. Light spinning mixer, push back on block significantly decreased for the rapid button press version. So the opponent will always be very, very close to you. Very, very close. So it's going to make a lot harder to space the light spinning mixer. So that's bad for Rashid. Landing recovery on whiff decreased or increased from 11 to 16 frames. That's huge. That's really big. That's a big window. So now if he whiffs it, he's very whiff punishable. Block stop for the third hit increased by four frames. I don't know fucking... I don't know how many hits it naturally is. I thought it was... Is it three or four? This might mean if the... No, I don't know what the hell's going on. Block stop is uh, how long the screen freezes. This isn't going to affect recovery. This is just going to show you... Okay, that just makes it easier to react to the fact that you just blocked a light mixer. Because right now a light mixer just comes and goes really quickly. Right now if you block a light mixer, you might not realize until you're blocking the attack that like followed the light mixer. But this means that it's going to be a lot easier to just be like, oh shit, this is a light mixer, this is minus two. And it's going to be point blank in minus two since it pushes back less. So this is just, this is nerfing the shit out of light mixer. It's still okay, but like this is, this is making it really obvious that when you block a light mixer, it's either your turn or Rashid has to EXDP. Those are the only two things that can happen. Because right now Rashid can get a lot of fake pressure with that. Yeah, light mixer into three frame short. And then people just let it slide because it happened so quickly. Light Eagle Spike sped up the startup when performed in close range. That's arguably a tiny buff. I don't know how much that'll actually be nice. That might give him like a new juggle or something more consistent or something like that. That doesn't seem like it's going to be a huge deal, but it might be. Already all the cancels he goes into. He might be able to get like a light into Eagle Spike now. What if you can do like stand jab into Eagle, light Eagle Spike? Because that could happen with this change. But, like, it already works pretty consistently after all his mediums, so... I don't know. This probably does something in, like, a juggle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and VT1 stuff. Instant light eagle spike after VT1. Changed so Rashid will bounce off the opponent when blocked. EX eagle spike. So no longer will he EX eagle spike through you and get out of the corner. Because uh, right now, if he eagle spikes, um, he recovers really far away. And even if you can punish it, which some characters can do it fairly easily, and some characters have a really hard time with it, even if you can punish it, um, Rashid still escapes the corner. So now it's going to punish like a regular ass eagle spike. So this is a big nerf. This is a huge nerf. This takes a, a weird scenario out of the game. It was annoying. It's annoying when fucking characters have moves that go through you. EXV eagle spike. That's VT2. Damage increased. No, it decreased from 140 to 100. I don't have eyes. Stun decreased. So this leads to towards strong into mixer, or even towards strong into haboob, or towards strong into tornado. I think it works to all of them actually. No, it no. Yeah, that's it. This this has juggle follow-ups. So I guess they want to make it less rewarding. 
V Airborne Eagle Spike, damage decreased from 120 to 100. That's obviously a nerf. Just less rewarding to land. EXV Air Eagle Spike, you get um, you get follow-ups from this too. And they... Oh, it's, all, it's minus two! No! So this is like a safe dive kick. It already was, but now it's now it's like fair. Right now it's like a free approach. Well, I shouldn't say free because you need one of your three uses of VT2 and you need an EX meter. But you would be plus. It's a dive kick that's like really hard for most characters to anti-air. And you led to a mix-up. It wasn't a great mix-up, but it was a mix-up. Um, yeah, 140 to 100 is a huge nerf. And 120 to 100 is a huge nerf too. Rashid has really high damage combos with Asifa with VT2. And now they're getting a lot worse. Um, this is, this is, this is, I agree with this change alone, but they're really, they're, 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 they're fucking Rashid up, dude. Increase the pushback on block. That means the minus two isn't a huge deal. It just means Rashid doesn't get like a coin flip anymore. Altair is VT1. Yeah, it's VT1. Oh no, it's a super. <laughs> VT1 is... Oh, what is uh, uh, Esar or whatever? I'm retarded. I don't know fucking his move names. Super was my second guess. Um, oh, that's yeah. Right now it's like immune to virusles, isn't it? So now if you virus after he does the the super, then the virus should hit him after the invincibility ends. This is this is. This is just fair. This isn't even like it's a big nerf, but like it's it's how it should have been from the start. That's just a warranted nerf. Um EX whirlwind shot, V whirlwind shot. Damage reduced from eighty to sixty, big nerf. Stun for the medium and hard rations reduced from one fifty to one forty, tiny nerf, not really a big deal. EXV, damage and stun nerf. He Asifa um got really, really nerfed, and Rashid got nerfed in general. People have been saying Rashid got buffs, buffs, buffs for like four updates in a row, and that's true. And now he's, uh, they changed the sloth emote. It's like something else now. Serious sloth. That's so annoying, dude. Why did they do it like that? Why did they, why they do me? Why they, why they ruin my fucking sloth? Forward throw, two frames recovery, so less oaky. Slightly increase the separation distance upon landing the throw in the corner. Can you do... That's already gone, isn't it? Towards throw into... F towards fierce. That's probably, like, extra gone now. So, n absolutely no corner follow-up pressure. They really don't want you to have that. Stand medium punch, reduce the backwards hitbox, so I guess it's not as good if the opponent's jumping over your head. They buffed it and then they nerfed it. Well. When Dark Day, remember. Alpaca. We're reading notes, dude. This is important. This is what I do, is I uh, analyze changes. Standing medium kick increase the advantage from three to four frames. That's actually kind of nice. That means she gets stand medium kick it to stand short into EX elbow. Uh, it also means she can link super. Right now, the only way to go from stand medium kick to super is stand medium kick and then jab and then an instant super from jab. And the you can't buffer the motion because she's got command overlap. So you have to do stand jab into a full super motion, which is really awkward on the fingers. But now you have an EX follow up. You can't do an EX follow up from stand jab, but you can from stand short. And you have uh, a link into super, which is something that an actual human can do. Say medium kick, and then go straight to super. That probably does a little bit more damage, too. So overall, this is pretty nice. Yeah, I actually... I actually This should be a lot easier, because it's only, it's only uh, 28 instead of 56. And 30, I guess, because we have like soccer and block it down at the bottom, too. Uh, Ryu's better, but VT1 is worse. But Re VT2 is a lot better, so like most Ryu should pick VT2 now. He's like better overall. I don't know, it depends. It's still up to you for Reeves VTs. Because VT1 has a lot more general utility. Being able to activate it off of an EX uh, Fireball, for example. It's pretty nice. Crutch Hard Kick. Recovery increased on whiff and on block by two frames, so it's a little easier to punish. It's like kind of hard to punish right now, so okay. 
near movement. Uh, this is her V-Skill move, I guess. No, what the hell is this? I thought this is her V-Skill move, but I thought that was already kind of hit punishable. Spend the collision boxes in the upwards direction during the move. Oh, this might just be if you're doing it only from, from her Thunderclap. No, it's just it's just VT1. Spark shows VT1. So her V skill in VT1 is now counter hit punishable. And it's taller? I don't know what the fuck's going on. So this is the overhead. BT1 overhead is a little bit faster. That's a buff. Uh, double slap. That's maybe medium punch to medium kick. I don't know what the fuck that is. Double slap. That doesn't sound right. Is that towards fierce fierce? That might just be towards fierce. What the fuck is that? What's double slap? I'm trying to think of fucking Laura doesn't even have that many moves. So, but it doesn't make sense if it's a TC. Is that the first? Is that just towards fierce? Oh, yeah, it's her push box. Now she can't go under the opponent. That's 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 removing something that never should have been there. Okay, it's the double towards Fierce. Why is it saying the stud have increased on both of them? That's almost certainly referring to the move in a vacuum. It's almost certainly re just referring to the first hit. EX Sunset Wheel, that's the command grab, I think. Expanded the forward hitbox for the second active throw frame. So she can grab people from marginally farther away. But it's one frame slower, I guess. Matsuda Sway, that's VT2. Change to the dodging motion will not consume V trick timer gauge. That's pretty nice. That's a buff. Um, that means if you're just using it to dodge, you can do it with impunity. Shock Choke. So that means you can use it against fireballs. That's like the biggest change there. Is you can be hanging around at mid-screen and Gal can throw a sonic boom and you can sway out of the way. That's actually like... Oh, double stop is Virus. Okay, I should have known. So that's just a boring ass change. Virus is a frame slower. Maybe, maybe there was some button where they would have gotten hit, but now they'll block in time. But one frame is not a very significant difference. Shock choke. Uh, v timer consumption amount increased. So this just makes it so you lose if you get the shock. If you go for the shock choke at all, it's just gone. Fix the phenomenon where Laura would have a hurtbox during the moves animation. That was a mistake. I thought that was deliberate. I thought that she could just get hit when she went for the grab. But I guess that, that was a mistake. I guess she's supposed to be invincible for the grab. Um Okay, so this is this is a big this is a big two buffs to VT two. This is uh this is all pretty good. This is all nice. It helps for Rashid's C A but it hurts in other places, so it's like overall it depends. How many times are you going to be via wrestling Rashid's critical art, and how many times are you going to be via wrestling everything else? Send light punch, reduce the upwards hitbox, so anti air light punch got worse. Forward throw, two more frames of recovery, so less Oki. She, she, Rui, Rui. Ease the combo count. I don't know what the fuck is going on there. That might be card crutch follow up, that might be down towards fierce. I have no idea. Nikaiho, increase the overall movement frames from 30 to 31. Added a hurt box from 26 to 31. That might be down towards fierce. It's hard to say. I don't really know what's going on. Only the first hit of Shishi Rui Rui would hit during specific combo routes when Koryu Dokuda was activated. I think that's VT1. Like Tomahawk, backwards throw, damage increased. Oh, wow, that's actually... 160 is quite a lot for a throw. <laughs> that's actually respectable damage. But I think that literally leaves Alex... One, it swaps sides, and two, it leaves him, like, full screen. So that's, like, terrible for Alex in most cases. Well, I don't know. If you're back throwing, you probably want to swap sides. But uh, Alex is a guy who likes to be close, so... 160 is... 160 is very rewarding. I can't even lie. But, you know, 20 damage is... It adds up, but that's not going to be, like... That's a, that's a that's a nice little buff. Standing light punch made worse as an anti-air. Ouch! Why? 
increase the active frames from two to three. That technically makes it better as an A tier, but with the worst hitbox, it's probably not going to do anything. Um, I can't think of anything else the extra active frame would do. Maybe you can... Uh, you wouldn't really meet you with a stain jab. Reduce the recovery from eight frames to seven frames. That might mean he's plus an extra frame afterwards, but that won't give him a new link. And also it doesn't give him any new cancels because it's only the recovery, not like the hit stun. So I can't think of what that's going to do. <laughs> this is just, this is just, this isn't really doing anything, I don't think. Well, it probably is, but I can't think of what. Standing hard kick forces stand. That's actually kind of good because standing hard kick into V-trigger has kind of iffy follow-ups. This is, uh, technically it's a buff to his VT2 in a sort of way, but um, now he can do like stuff that only hits standing opponents. I mean, what does he have? What only hits standing opponents? I can only think of the VT2. Like, what else is there? <laughs> um, am I forgetting something really obvious? What are Alex's like stand only attacks? Yeah, this is only just this is just for max range hard kick and to activate into another hard kick into VT2. That's all it's doing, I think. Crutch light punch, reduce the upward hitbox. It's a worse anti-air. Lariat. Oh yeah, I guess now he can do a max range. Larry hits crouch, but not if they're far away. So now if they're far away, Lariat will hit. Yeah, that's that's actually a pretty big buff. That's actually really significant. Because right now, you have to go for another hard kick. Well, you don't have to, but it's like the... If you could do Lariat into Stand Strong, that would do more damage than just another hard kick. So, this is, like, good. Ken got a bit better. I didn't think about Lariat as, like, a standing opponent only move, but for most ranges it is. Lariat can be cancelled. Uh, that's good for Via Bristles. So now if the opponent does a Via Bristle, you can cancel your Lariat into a Command Grab and fuck them up. Um... What else is that good for? That probably isn't damage optimal ever, because you can just link into Stand Strong instead. So that's probably mostly for punishing via reversals. Um, maybe from like max range, you can do some stuff with it. Maybe. Maybe there's like ranges where you won't be able to link the Stand Strong, and you can just go into Hard Chop or something instead. Or medium chop or whatever works there. I doubt hard chop works, but medium chop should. Reduce the upward hitbox means that the it doesn't go as high when you attack. So opponents who are like mid-air uh, won't get hit when they previously would have gotten hit. Does Is that going to combo, you think? We don't know that. Or do we? Is, do we know that that's going to work? We had two people suggest it. You can't do a heavy punch into a hard flash chop. Except on counter hit. Chop, increase the disadvantage on block from minus 6 to minus 8. That's the overhead, I think, towards strong. So that's... Um, that's needless, to be honest. Alex's, for the record, Alex's overhead goes pretty far, but um, it's goddamn it, it's <laughs> it was it was like minus four, and then it went to minus six, and now it's going to minus eight. Why? Why are they doing him like that? They're doing him dirty. That's <laughs> why are they making his overhead like the worst overhead in the game. Flying cross chop ease the height restriction in which the move can be performed. So now you can do it from more heights, which means it's easier to sneak in, I guess. Use the combo count, so you might be able to juggle into it. Um, you could do that in third strike, but it was really specific. But now maybe you can do like crutch fierce two hits into activate into jump down fierce. That would actually be really lit if that works. Increase the float for mid air hit. Yeah, it's looking like that's what they're going for. It's looking like you can do like crutch fierce into V trigger into flying cross drop into something. That's actually kind of cool. Big boot. That's the reversal. Virus, I guess. That's like a non-change. Medium flash chop, reduce the startup. So now uh, he might be able to do it from stand strong or something. He might have a new cancel into it. If there's anything that doesn't work by one frame, it'll now work. But that's not going to change anything else, I don't think. Hard flash chop does more damage. That's nice, but hard flash chop is kind of hard to sneak in. 
So, you know, when you can sneak it in, sneak it in, but... Hard air knee smash, east combo count. So now, you might be able to have some more juggles into hard knee smash. So I'm guessing you can do, like, crutch fierce two hits, V-trigger activate, jump, flying cross chop into hard air knee smash. That's going to be really cool if that all works. Delay the timing at which you can move again after the hit by four frames, so there's more recovery. Increase the separation distance after hit, so he's further away. Ouch. So this is maybe not a move you want to end combos with. Uh, but you have good Oki in the corner, right? So he's going to be a little bit further away, but um, maybe this is killing the the corner follow-ups. I think this move actually has good Oki in the corner. Well, this is only the hard version that's changing, so I don't know. You can still do the light one or the medium one. EX power bomb Throw hitbox startup reduced from 6 frames to 5. Only for the EX? Were the other ones already 5 or the other ones all 6? That sounds... I mean, it's nice to have a 5 frame command grab, but they're leaving all his other versions in the dust. Alex should have 5-frame command grabs. Why the fuck are they 6? Rage boost, that's VT1. Reduce the collision box on startup. So I'm guessing he can um, get hit or something while he's activating rage boost. Choke sleeper. Throw hitbox startup reduced from 6 frames to 5. That's the chop follow-up. That doesn't seem... Oh, you know, that's a nerf, isn't it? Because that, that doesn't matter on hit. But right now he can do like hard chop into a very delayed choke sleeper. And if you do it on like the last frame, it like grabs the opponent. And they're not in block stun, so it like acts as a grab. It's like his old gimmick of hard chop into very, very late uh, power bomb. And he can do that right now with choke sleeper. And if they make it one frame faster, that's probably not going to work anymore. So that's like a nerf. <laughs> that's actually like worse. Flying DDT, that's the VT2 regular follow up. Um, you think that's all going to work? That sounds like a good combo. Damage decreased. This was already weaker than the Choke Sleeper. Why are they reducing the damage again? Sped up the startup by three frames when performed as a cancel. This is like a non-factor. The opponent can get out of it by crouching, and there's nothing you can do to prevent them from crouching on block. This is literally a non-factor. This might make it... This should make it combo for more stuff, actually. So maybe you can do, like... This, maybe you can do flying DDT from, like, jabs. You can already do it from, like, mediums and heavies. I think. No, you can do it from... You can't do it from low strong, can you? Or, like, low forward. So this might make it work from low strong and low forward. I think you can only do it from stand strong right now. So that's nice. But, you know, really, that's not a big deal. Because you can't prevent the opponent from crouching. Flying DDT should just hit opponents. Just grab them. <laughs> just make it work. Um, overall, buffed, but the buffs aren't a huge deal. This is nice. This is bad. This is nice. This is insignificant, but bad. This is nice. This is nice. This is bad, but not too significant. People already don't overhead. This is potentially really good. This is not significant. This is potentially a little nice. This is kind of insignificant, but kind of nice. This is potentially nice. This is nice. I don't know what the fuck this is. Um, this is bad, but insignificant. This is insignificant. Overall, Alex is buffed. Alex is, like, better. But it's not... I don't know. I don't know if it's enough, but it's it's he's definitely better. Guile, Dragon Suplex. Damage increased from 120 to 130. That's nice. It's not increased. First back knuckle. A little slower. Recovery increased on hit by two frames, so less follow-up. Probably can't throw a... Now he probably can't have like a true meaty boom on you after a reverse. Sonic boom. Pushback on block slightly decreased. That's... That's almost definitely good for Guile. Because booms are plus on block. Booms are like plus one. So usually, if pushback is reduced and you're plus, that's good for you. If pushback is reduced and you're minus, that's bad for you. But this is overall... This means the opponent has to walk in less, so it's maybe a little bit bad for him in neutral. But in corners, he might have um, longer block strings. Knife Edge, that's VT2, cannot be activated by cancel to regular boom. No change for the X version. So that's a big nerf. That's actually like a really significant nerf because that's Guile's main activate. In fact, I don't even know what his fucking activate combos are from normals because you just always activate from boom. 
Like, I activate from back fierce. I activate from forward fierce occasionally. And then I activate from fucking booms. And that's it. Like, I don't know what the fuck lo stand strong... I mean, stand fierce low strong is on activate. But it's not going to give you a fucking dash in into a stand fierce. Tell you that. This is like a big nerf. This is a good reason to pick VT1. That's like a huge nerf to VT2. It's going to make you activate more in neutral. You're going to have more just wild activates. Or you're going to have like just uh, back fierce activate or stand hard kick activate or stuff like that. Low strong, stand strong. I mean, low short, let's stand strong activate. Um, does that, are you point blank after that? If you get that hard punch, do you get like a sweep or do you get a low strong? Activate on sweep still works. But the, the thing is like he gets a full combo if he activates off a of boom. Activating off sweep just means that either you get out of the corner or uh, uh, you get some blocks done. You don't have a you don't have an ender. You don't have a combo. So this is a huge. This is a big nerf. This is one of the biggest nerfs we've read so far. That's gonna make people. That's gonna make a lot. This alone is gonna make a lot of people big VT1. But that'll just be the same as season two. So whatever. Somersault kick increase the horizontal blowback distance on hit. Is that just flash kick? I think so, because they say the EX version, and Guy only has fucking two EX moves, and it's not Sonic Boom. So it makes the opponent further away, which is arguably good for Guile. Change to the condition after the active frame is caused counter hit for the regular, and the EX version is the same as the regular versions. I don't know what the fuck's going on. This is doing something to the counter hit state for the flash kicks, but I can't tell what the fuck it's actually doing. Ryu and Ken's fireballs were not changed. But Ryu and Ken were both buffed. Literally everyone's coming in and asking about Ryu and Ken specifically. There are a lot of Ryu and Ken players, aren't there? Condition after the active frames cause counter hit for the regular. And the X version are the same as the regular version. This is written so awkwardly, I can't tell what the fuck's going on. EX Somersault Kick increased horizontal blow back distance on hit, so it's just going to leave the opponent further away. Decrease the invincibility period on EX V Somersault Kick from 31 to 11. Why the fuck was it 31? There's a certain point where it doesn't matter. It's just invincible, and that's that. Um, so 11 is still long enough. It's still in that doesn't matter state. But I didn't know it was fucking 31. That's like a really long time. Yes, technically we use VT1 fireballs were nerfed in a sense that they use up his VT faster. Yeah, 11 is way more than enough. This is like an insignificant nerf, but I don't know why the fuck it was 31 in the first place. That's like so much. Sonic Hurricane change so until you couldn't cross up well on VT2. Yeah. Before this. How does this change? I don't see any changes. Oh. That's no that didn't that doesn't actually change anything. Gal can still anti air you if you're crossing him up and um you can still punish him if he doesn't hit you by the anti air. Thirty one doesn't thirty one shouldn't change anything there. It does affect his I don't know, eleven's enough to go through most raw supers to be honest. There's only a few supers that um eleven won't get out of. I can't see that changing anti airs in any way. No, I see you mean EX, but I can't see it changing anti airs in any way. If you cross Guile up in VT2, either he does EX flash kick and it hits you already because 11 frames is enough, or um, he doesn't hit you and then it doesn't matter that it's invincible for 31 frames because you can still chase him. I can't see that changing in any way. Sonic Tempest. Change so that the Guile isn't pushed back to a different position until the attack start up. Huh. I don't know what the fuck is going on. The hitbox in EX is big. I understand that. I don't see what you're trying to say. It'll still be big if it's 11 frames of invincibility.
It shouldn't change shit. What's this? Change so that Guile isn't pushed to a different position until the attacks start up. So I'm guessing that Guile actually moves when he does this v uh, this super. I think Guile moves forward, doesn't he? I'm pretty sure that Guile moves forward during this. Or backward, rather. Sorry. I think if you hold up forward, he like moves backward, and now he won't move backward until the attack is actually started. Something like that. I forget. I think Gal has a little bit of movement when he does the super, and now it's delaying the movement until the super's already up. Reduce Sonic Boom's pushback on block to make it harder to push opponents away. Increase knockback distance on hit on Somersault Kick to make it easier to create distance from opponent. It's no longer possible to cancel Knife Edge from Sonic Boom in order to differentiate it from Solid Puncher. I agree with all these changes. That's nice. Yeah, I've done that myself. If you hold up forward, you could get between Gal and the Super at most ranges. Are you talking about the hitbox or the frames? I don't understand what you're talking about. 31 to 11 is still invincible enough to anti-air anything. When you're anti-airing, it's only like... Only like, like 5 or 6 frames actually matter. 11 is like way more than enough to anti-air perfectly. 31, the difference between 11 and 31 is insignificant. About cross-ups, yeah, but like, what about it? The hitbox will still hit cross-ups, or not, depending on the angle, and then the invincibility won't the invincibility will last until it would have hit or not, because it's already decided by 11 frames in. And then if it didn't hit, it's still punishable. And if it does hit, then it's still unpunishable. Nothing will change. I'm getting distracted. Ibuki. Damage increased from 120 to 130 from forward throw. That's nice. Back throw, 140 to 150. That's nice. Jumping hard kick. Expanded the downward hitbox. That's... I think they only buffed her jump hard punch to beat lights, but now they buffed her jump hard kick to beat lights. 11 is still a lot. 11 should still maybe anti-air fireballs, to be honest. It might trade now. Right now it doesn't even trade. Right now, as an Akuma who's done air fireballs against VT2 um, Guile, I can safely say that air fireballs do not even trade with the ZX flash kick. But now it might trade. And that would be good for Akuma, but that's like, you know, that's like one thing. <laughs> that's like one thing between two characters. And honestly, Guile doesn't need better anti-air than he already has, so fuck you. Fuck you, Guile. Kazakiri, that's DP. Change the damage in the last hit only to 70. It doesn't even say what it was. I don't know if that's stronger or weaker. Right now, Kazakiri does the same damage as hard, uh, hard, uh, Rida. But you can back roll it, so you'd rather do Rida just so you can't be... You'd rather do light rider just so that you're close and the opponent can't back roll. That's um if that's better, then that's a good reason to actually end in Kazakiri if you need damage rather than just ending in Rider. Because right now you always end in Rider because you always want the Oki. Anti your upkick. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, is this only changing if it's last hit only? Maybe. Yeah, because if you do anti air light upkick, for example, um that only gets last hit usually. So 70 is almost... I, I think it's like 40 or something right now, isn't it? It's not very strong. If it's 70 for the last hit, that's a big buff. Um, Hanagasumi, via Rissel. Startup increased from 15 to 17, so that's arguably worse. Decreased the active frames from 13 to 4. That's, uh, I guess, a lot worse. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't realize it was 13. Usually it just hits or not, and that's it. Incre reduced the hitbox, so it's smaller. Increased the log's movement speed. Change the uniformity minus uniformly minus two on block. I didn't realize it could be variable. Push back on block decrease. This is a bunch of nerfs to her V Rissel. But most of them probably won't matter. Now she's it's easier to block, and now it's gonna be minus two always. And she's gonna be closer. So it's like worse. And it's also slower, so it's still worse. But maybe she can it says increase the log's movement speed. She might be able to V reverse she might hit faster if she very versus a projectile from like mid screen. Because right now that takes a long time to actually get to the opponent. It might be like a 
you know, if you're further away, you can still hit them and punish or something. Probably not punish. Fuma Shuriken, Haku, damage reduced. Fuma Shuriken, Ko Kofu, damage increased. This is probably the straight one, and this is probably the up one. The up one is less combo friendly, so if it's stronger, that makes sense. The low one is more combo friendly, so if it's weaker, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, changed as an ATR. Okay, so this is all this is all rather nice. Technically speaking, these are okay. Hold on, buff, 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 uh, buff. F giant, giant, giant nerfs. Uh, nerf, big, big nerf, little buff. I don't know, man. She's she's like the same. I don't I don't see her tier shifting that much from these. Damage nerf to I mean that's not huge, but that's that's gonna matter in almost every round. So, you know. That's not good for her anyway. Balrog, forward throw, one forty, pretty nice. Buffalo head, that's V reverse. Seventeen, totally standard. Hard screw smash, reduced startup. I don't think that'll make it combo from any extra things, but it might make it a little easier to use as an ATR. Increase the forward movement distance. That might make it easier or harder to use this in ATR. It'll also probably give you a little bit more corner carry when you're doing your punish combos. So overall, that sounds buffed. This sounds like two buffs. B3, that's one of his... Um, is that one of his... What the fuck is that? Is that the command grab? Oh, this is just VT2 activate. What's going on here? I thought B... What's, what's going on here? I thought B3 was one of his TCs. Can be cancelled from Hard Smasher, Hard Pressure, Buffalo Swing, and Buffalo Pressure. These are KKB Punch, KKB Kick, um, and then like the BT, I mean the Tart Combo, KKB Punch and Tart Combo, KKB Kick. So it sound, right now you can't do any of those into BT2, but now it sounds like you can do all of them into BT2. So that is a big buff, because I would say KKB Kick, the overhead, is probably, that cancel into BT1 is one of the biggest reasons to pick BT1. Because that cancel is really good. It's an overhead that's hard to react to. That leads to a pretty strong combo. I think that leads to Crutch Fierce on Activate. So that's like a big deal. This is like a huge buff. This is this is going to lead to a lot of Balrog's play in BT2. Recovery can be performed when the second hit of Under Impact is different from that than that of Crazy Rush. So it's fixed to be consistent with Crazy Rush. I don't know what the fuck that means. I don't know what Under Impact is. And I don't know what Crazy Rush is. Is Under Impact double low short? I mean double low forward? These might be his uh, target combos without. No, that doesn't make any sense. It's a mystery. B3, no mercy. That's just the grab, I guess. Well, combo, when performed from a cancelable normal move on hit. That's a huge buff! What the fuck? That's huge! I'm guessing that's that's going to make him like um, like Zingy VT2. Reduce the recovery after the throw by 8 frames. So that's... Um, oh, my chat got... How long was it down? It was down for ages. God damn it. Someone say something. Crazy Rush is VT1. Oh. Okay, so that sounds like VT double low forward is different on uh, for activation into VT1 or VT2. So now it's the same. Reduce the recovery after the throne by 8 frames. I don't, I don't know why it says throne. Um... Change the status after hit in the corner to be about the same as the middle of the screen, so you get the same Oki, I guess. Expanded the forward hitbox only when performed from a cancel. So now he can just cancel into his command grab and get like a shit ton of stun. It's probably not going to be damage optimal ender, but it's definitely going to be the optimal ender anyway because of all the stun it does. How many do you get? You get two, right? You get two successful ones. So now you can actually confirm it. Right now you can't confirm it. You've got to frame trap into it or you've got to like do it raw and just pray. But if you can confirm into it, that's a huge deal. This is just going to be a whole bunch of Balrogs picking VT2 from now on. VT1 has really powerful combos, but, like, I can't. <laughs> VT2 buffs are too strong. Like, why would you pick VT1? You get Dash Punch into VT and Turn Around Punch into VT, which isn't even that good anymore. I'll take VT VT2 any day of the week. Um, Jury. Chi Sen Kyaku. Damage increased from 110 to 120. Added two frames of recovery after the throw. Um... 
Okay, so nerfed loops and added damage. Send light punch, reduce the upwards hitbox, no more anti-air jab, but it's fine, she's got a DP. Sending hard kick, reduce the downwards hitbox, so now she can go over lows easier with it. Um, jumping hard kick, increase the amount of EX meter gain when performed as part of a chain combo during Feng Shui Engine Alpha from 30 to 50. So, what the fuck is even going on here? This is such a very specific change. Is it talking about... You can do this as a regular-ass target combo. You can do jump strong into... Um, in VT1, you can jump cancel her punch target combo. Stand strong into towards fierce. And then you can do stand strong into... Or air strong into air hard kick. But... This is making maybe that build more V-meter, or it might only be making it if you're doing the actual air chains, which you never ever see. Like jump light kick, jump medium kick, jump hard kick, or something like that. This is weird. I don't know what's going on here. That's like, it's EX meter gain too. Like, who cares? About 20 EX. That's like nothing. That's such a weird change. Why'd they change that? v reverse startup increased from 15 to 17. Increased pushback distance on block. That's actually good. That's a buff. For her and Kaku, uh, normal NV trigger. That's the charge. Or it's the release. It could be either. It sounds like it's the charge. Damage decreased from 100 to 90. That's a tiny, tiny nerf. Um, Jerry's borderline unchanged. All these are fine. This is like a tiny, tiny nerf. This is bog standard. This is a tiny nerf. This is a somewhat significant buff. But this is still minus, so going over lows with it. I don't know. People don't low that much in Street Fighter V, if you've ever noticed. Lows aren't really a thing that people spam in this game. People just, like, spam, like, pokes. This is the fucking CVS2. Crouch fierce all day, every day. Except it's, like, Stan Run House and Stan Fierce. Nerf to 4th throw is bog standard. It's, like, not even a change. Everyone's 4th though. Her 4th throw is just the same as everyone else now. If it's only 120, I'm guessing that she can still, like, meaty the opponent, but she can't make it a mix-up with a throw. Uh, Jerry just won Evo Japan, so... They probably didn't really want to buff her. Jury is slept on, but I don't think she's great, but I do think she's slept on. Jury, like, is theoretically a higher tier than she's working right now, I feel. People act like Jury's, like, super shitty, but I think Jury's only a little shitty. Jury's fine, don't worry, just just play better. Spartan Bomb, stun increased from 120 to 150, tiny buff. Spartan Bomb backwards, decreased from 200 to 150. Light Punch, one extra frame of recovery. It just makes it whiff longer. That's weird. Why'd they do that? That means Light Punch into V-Trigger Activate is going to be plus one additional frame. So I don't know what that is right now, but it's going to be one frame better. Send Light Kick, advantage on hit increased from plus three to plus four. So that means he can combo after it. Now you can do like Stand Light Kick into Crouch Jab. But you'll have no charges, so I don't know why the fuck. I don't know if you would ever do that. Advantage on block, that's kind of nice. Increased pushback distance on block and hit. That's kind of bad. I think he was, like, still pretty close after a stand light kick, wasn't he? Um, I don't know. That's, like, arguably bad. It's That's not going to change much, I don't think. The extra plus frame is nice, but the extra pushback nullifies the extra plus frame, so... Stand hard punch, reduce the opponent pushback distance on crush counter, so now you might be able to do walk-in crouch fierce easier. It's already possible, but now it'll be easier, but that still won't be possible if you're using it as a poke. Um... I can't see anything changing as a poke. It's just going to make his max damage stuff better on... on. It's going to make it easier to use. It's going to be good for like characters like Chun-Li where you can't get a charge stand fierce as a punish on EX Bird Kick. If you only get regular stand fierce, you're going to be able to use Crutch Fierce as a follow-up easier. Uh, I use a PS1 pad. Like it into Light Punch, Medium Punch, t Target Combo. Yeah, that'll work if you're absolutely point blank unless the pushback makes it not work. But, like, why would you even start with light kick now? Because that just means you don't have down charge, and the extra pushback means that you can't, like, use it as a tick throws easily. So, I don't know. Send light kick, crouch medium punch, crouch light punch, I bet. That'll be good if it works, but again, like, pushback. Crouch light punch, recovery increased from 8 to 9, no changes on hit or block, reduce the effort hit box. So, that makes it worse as an AT air, and this makes it, um,. Plus one more on V-Trigger, which is probably not very significant. It might be good. It might give him some mirror stuff or something. I don't know. 
crouch medium kick delayed the cancel timing for each version of tyrant blaze by two frames so this might give you crouch medium kick and then you can react to tyrant blaze or not based on whether it hits or is blocked so you might be able to only use vt2 on hit or something like that or it might just make it easier to do but i don't know don't know until i play quarrel kick that's down towards hard kick i think increase the advantage on hit from plus one to plus three they had to do something to make it better but urian has no three frame move and it's a knockdown on hit so um I mean, on, crush, on counter hit. So that's... I can't really see that doing a whole lot. <laughs> I don't I don't know what that's going to do. Terrible smash. That's towards fierce, I think. Increase the disadvantage on block from minus 6 to minus 8. So they made it worse on block. And it recovers closer. Uh, same with the t the target combo into towards fierce. So target combo, the overhead is worse. It's like a lot worse. It, they already made it worse in season three, and now it's season three point five. It's looking even shittier. Tyrant pressure. That's the VT two, right? I think no, it's not. Tyrant pressure is the V skill. No, it's VT. No, that is VT two. Change the length of the V timer from three thousand to three thousand two hundred, so it lasts longer. Tyrant blaze. Increase the horizontal blowback distance for the second attack on a hit. Increase the V timer consumption. So this is all his VT2 release stuff, I guess. So that'll increase the forward hitbox. So it's better. It uses more of your V meter, but it um, hits from further away and uh, throws them further away. So you get a lot more corner carry. That already has corner carry for days, so whatever. That's nice, though. Um, increase the V timer consumption from... Okay, so this is the this is with the <laughs> this is the same ass attack, but with V skill. Decrease the recovery of the first hit only by four frames. So is it more plus on hit, on block, everything? Change up armor properties until eight frames after the first hit. So it'll have uh, armor for longer while it's traveling, I guess. For pretty much most of the second hit should have armor, I guess. Expand the forward hitbox. So this is going to make it a lot easier to BT2 through fireballs or something like that. Um, Tyrant Blaze increased the... V so this is fully charged plus with V skill. Consumes more V meter. Changed up armor properties until 3 frames after the first hit. Expanded the forward hitbox. So it goes farther. Anger Snap Fist. Startup increased from 16 to 7. That's probably his V-reverse. These are all... All these changes are really hard to read. I don't really know what's all going on. Just a numerous light attacks, three balance, earrings, combo routes, and sequences. Additionally made major adjustments to Tyrant Blaze when making adjustments such as improving its performance after activating V-Skill. So it's bigger. It's like hits the opponent sooner because it's got a bigger hitbox and because it moves while like attacking. Um, it's going to hit sooner, which basically effectively makes it faster. And it's going to... Uh, toss the opponent further away, but it's going to consume more V meter for his VT2. So that's overall like a lot better for VT2. Is this chat frozen? I feel like it's frozen. I don't know what's on my internet tonight. Adjusted numerous light attacks. Oh, I just read that. Akuma. Uh, Hakugosai Shiretsu Hashi version. Hold on, I can, I can do this. I can figure this shit out. Shiretsu Hashi, is that VT1? That's VT2, isn't it? That's VT2, I think. Um. So one of his... Is that is that, is that Flip? Is that even Flip? One of his uh, Shiretsu Hashi version, er, specials was not behaving like the X special it was imitating, and now it is. Setting Light Punch, not as tall. That's a nerf. Two anti-airs. Say Medium Kick. Um, is now more plus on V-Trigger. So that's actually... It's easier to whiff punish, but it's more plus on V-Trigger. Right now, stay medium kick on V-Trigger is already, like, you can do another stay medium kick, so I don't know what the hell you get from this. That's better. It's a buff. It's not, like, I don't know. It's not significant. Crouch Light Punch, reduce the upper tip box. I didn't know that worked as an anti-air, but now it doesn't. 
Our charge points recovery increased from 16 to 20, so that's, again, more... It's easier to whiff punish, which is really good because that's one of the most abusable pokes in the game, card charge punch. It's like not a poke per se, it's a counter poke. It doesn't have a whole lot of range, but it beats a lot of other attacks. But if it's got four extra whiffing frames, then that means it's easier to counter poke. That's like, yeah, that's like actually pretty significant. Uh, but it gives him more plus frames if you be trigger cancel it, but he probably won't do that. He'd probably just... Akuma almost always be trigger cancels from like fireballs or like uh, TC stuff. Ghost, or uh, he's got a lot of stuff. Red Fireball. Go send QQ. I think it's supposed to be Kyaku. Um, oh, cool. It throws opponents farther away. If that works, that's pretty good. That's really good. I guess you'll have to be really close. But that should work. Yeah, that should link. And then from there, you can probably do a stand strong. Or maybe even another medium kick. But you don't even need another medium kick. Um, EX go sure you can expand the collision box for sure you on hit making it harder for an opponent to fall behind Akuma thank god the opponent falls out of that shit all the time if the opponent gets hit by the third hit okay that's what they should have done I said that if the opponent gets hit by the third hit and you V-trigger no you can't even you can't even V-trigger cancel by this point so it doesn't he still they can still quick stand if he V-trigger cancels but if they fall out naturally they can't quick stand that was literally the exact change I said they should have done when they changed it last time. And now they've made that change, so that's nice. VT2 can no longer cancel. Go Hadoken, EX Go Hadoken, Sekia, Go Shoha. Is that the super? No, it's not. Sekia, that might be the red fireball. On whiff. I didn't realize you could already do that. You can do fireball into, like, EX Demon Flip on whiff. <laughs> that's kind of cool. I didn't. I didn't know. So you can cancel you can cancel fireballs into like super on whiff. Normally you can't cancel attacks on whiff, but fireballs are like the exception. But in Street Fighter Five you usually can't do that. They that's mostly changed for Street Fighter Five, but there's still some exceptions. And it makes it sound like there that was like a bug, I guess. I never even tried to do that. Dohatsu Shoten and Shiretsu Hashi, that's both his triggers. Fix phenomenon where upon Cancelling into from certain special moves, Akuma retain invincibility frames while being able to move. I've seen this happen. Um, if you do DP into V trigger, Akuma keeps the invincibility from the DP for a little while. It's kind of neat, but it's broken, so I'm glad they're fixing it. It's not broken like it's overpowered, it's just broken like it's defective. It's not fair that he has that. V trigger activates, he's supposed to be vulnerable. Sekia Kuretsuha. That might be. I don't know what the fuck that is. Change those collision boxes will not move forward during recovery. Increase the amount of VX gauge his opponent will get on hit. Might be like uh, towards fierce or V skill or something. I don't know. Back fierce. No idea. It's a mystery. Yeah, Akuma's not really. Akuma's got a lot of bug fixes. It is. It's super. Yeah, because it's EX gauge the opponent is building. I thought that was EX gauge. When I saw the EX gauge, I was like, oh, it's not super. But it is. Sekia Kuretsuha. I've heard him say that. He says that when he does the super. They, it said they toned down his ability to rush down, but really, like, this isn't... <laughs> this isn't really nerfing his ability to rush down, I don't think. Oh, I just realized. This is, um... I get it. He can do fireball into VT1. I just got this change. He can do fireball into VT1 activate, even from like really far away. But now he can't do fireball into VT2 activate from far away. <laughs> crutch hard punch VT activate into dash crutch medium punch same medium kick. That's pretty good, but it's not amazing because you can already kind of do that. Because you can do crutch hard punch crutch medium punch fireball into that into VT activate into that same combo. Or maybe not that same combo, but you can do like dash in and then stay medium kick from there. He already has combos like that. So it's not going to be huge, I don't think. Colleen. Pressure Ridge. Ah, my throat is starting to actually... I'm starting to feel it. I've been doing a lot of talking. I got water here, so I'm okay. Damage increased from 120 to 130. That's a buff, I guess. Sin Hard Punch... Increase the disadvantage on block from minus 2 to minus 4. This is one of the safer V-trigger pokes. I mean, crush counter pokes. It's not very rewarding. 
In VT2 it is, but usually it's not. Um, but uh, this is a... This is a... This is a little nerf. I don't think she'll usually... She'll usually do it at a range where she's not punishable. Because you can space in hard punch. It doesn't advance or anything. A lot of the minus four heavies advance, like Ken stand hard kick and uh, Laura stand hard kick and uh, Jury stand hard kick. Um, so you can still punish them. They're minus four, but Jury, um, Colleen will still be really far away. So that's not a huge deal. It just makes it so it's always the opponent's turn, I guess. Crouching light punch, reduce the upwards hitbox. This was she had one of the better. No, this is crouching light punch. So it's more like a bug fix than anything else. Delayed the timing. For cancelling it to absolute zero by three frames. Is that one of her triggers? God, I don't know the names of her moves for shit. Why do they not fucking just put the motions? Crush medium kick expanded the upwards hurt box. That is definitely um uh I don't know, that means it's it doesn't low profile as well. Delayed the timing for cancelling to absolute zero. Okay, low forward doesn't cancel, so that's gotta be trigger. Reduce the backwards hitbox. I didn't know it had a backwards hitbox. Reduce the active frames from 3 to 2. That's a little nerf. You like your pokes to have nice big active frames. Um, Coach Hard Kick. Unified the cancel timing into Diamond Dust. Absolute zero. Frost Edge for the first hit. For both hit and block. Okay, so the thing is, she had a different window on hit cancelling and on block cancelling. And now it's the same, I guess. Same with Cold Low, which just ends in Crutch Hard Kick. Brynicle, I think that's low strong, low fierce. Unified cancel timing on hit and block. Recovery increased for the normal and V trigger versions on hit by five frames. So now if you don't cancel it, you're kind of fucked, I guess. Frost spike can cancel into absolute zero on block. What the fuck is frost spike? What the fuck is snow grain? I think frost edge is the v hard punch plus hard kick while doing um uh VT2. So if you do it raw, it takes a lot more V meter. But if you do it from a dash, it still takes the same amount. So raw is a lot easier to use to punish fireballs. So that's like a nerf to her ability to punish fireballs, which right now is some of the best in the game. She can literally just, like, if she's in VT2, she can just see the fireball from, like, almost any mid screen range and just VT instantly. And it's like a two button, it's a one frame input. And um, it's really good at punishing fireballs. It goes pretty far pretty fast. And it's fireball invincible for like the whole animation. So this is... She was kind of good against fireball characters because of that. So now she can do it less. Change so it will not hit opponents who are behind Colleen. So this is the cross-up in the corner nonsense. Absolute zero is VT2. Alright, thanks. Um, so now she can't like do... She can't like hit you on the front as you're recovering from like a tech flip or something like that. And then like go through you. Because that was some of the cheapest shit in the whole game. Only applies to grounded opponents. Has no effect on our juggle combos. Okay, so you can maybe still do it after a reset. But you can't do it <laughs> on a grounded opponent. Crutch, light kick, crutch, hard punch. Oh, okay. I thought it was crutch, medium punch, crutch, hard punch. So this is just more changes to her crutch, hard kick. And this is... No, what the... Okay, th what the fuck? Okay, no, that's what I thought. Okay, okay, we're this is this is more changes to a hard kick, that's what I already thought. And this is down hard punch. So you have to No, this is the pop up one. This is the one that launches, isn't it? Low light kick, low hard punch. That's the one that pops up. So uh now it's more unsafe on This is on hit. Recovery increased on hit. So I guess it's still safe on block. But now you've got less time to juggle. I guess she's got less stuff she can do. Damage increased from 90 to 120 on Diamond Dust. That's VT1, I think. Four dash and V trigger increased the VT. That's it's not a huge change, but I'm grateful to read that. She got a lot of dashes, and the dashes were really good. Inside slash decreased the advantage on hit from plus three to plus two. The hell's inside slash? Hold on, I can figure this shit out. Inside slash is that? That's not V skill, is it? It says in V trigger. Inside slash. Oh, it's not as good as I thought. I thought it was uh, invincible pretty early, but 9 is pretty late. Oh, that is V-Skill. I didn't realize that was... I didn't realize that was still plus 3 on v in V-Trigger. 
Is that a VT2 thing? Increase the disadvantage. Okay, so it's shittier. It's much shittier. Frost Tower. Increase the amount of... That's super, right? Increase the amount of EX gauge for the opponent from 20 to 100. That's a pretty big amount. You get a lot more v You get a lot more EX meter when you eat that super now. Okay, I didn't even know that about Colleen. I think I once knew that and just forgot. Colleen's a weird character. She's probably the character I know not the least about, but, like, she's up there. <laughs> I know a lot of her, like, I've seen a lot of gameplay of her, but, like, there's a lot to her. Mena, I know a lot about this bitch. Overflowing Nile, forward throw, barehanded, and crystal ball. One frame of recovery. So she doesn't have a real loop, but she has, like, a little pretend loop, and now it's probably a little shittier. Stand light punch, crystal ball. Expanded the downward hitbox of the crystal ball, so now it's a little bit bigger for the really far away parts of it. That's a buff. Stand hard kick for both. Reduce the backwards hitbox. Oh no! It used to be the greatest anti-air ever. Now it's going to be, like, probably fair. This is a good close and far anti-air, but now maybe you want to use hard kick for the far anti-airs and down hard punch for the close anti-airs, perhaps. But it could hit, like, pretty far back, to be honest. Base of the hitbox only will not hit opponents who are behind Minot. So that sounds like it's not as good as an anti-air at all. Um, Kamun Kick. Is that the slide? Change so the move can be performed using down forward and down backward diagonal direction inputs. Wait, you can do down back medium kick and get the slide? Is that what I'm reading here? No, that's got to be the drill kick. That makes sense. Because Dalsum got the same change. Soul Reflect. Kam Kamal. Barehanded. V gauge meter gain increased from 50-25 to 80-40. That's nice. Can cancel into Wisdom of Thoth. Prophecy of Thoth. Um, oh shit, she's getting, she's getting, she's getting V-Skill into Trigger. That's cool. That's cool. That's actually really neat. And she can do it from the, she can do it from the other one too. It's for both of them. That's cool. That knocks over though, so you're going to have to do juggles. This is 3.5. It's coming out tomorrow. That soon. They probably just had it ready and then we're putting it off until final round ended. Or not final. What? Mm, NCR. Soul Reflect Stella. That's the crouching one, I think. Uh, more meter. Reduce the hurt box. So it's actually probably a better anti air. Fix the phenomenon where if Monat was attacked before the hitbox became active, she would take standing damage. I. Oh, she just hits hit standing. It says standing damage, but standing damage is the same. But she's considered standing even though it's a crouching attack. Can cancel into Wisdom of Thoth, Prophecy of Thoth. So the crouching ones too. Um, I literally like lost a match against uh, Slain Man as Manot that I probably should have won because an early jump medium kick hit me out of crouching V-Skill during the startup. So that would... <laughs> I would have liked this then. Because I had anti air super after that, or I had juggle into super afterwards, and it would have won me the match. Fuck Slain, man. Soul Reflect. No, Guardian of the Sun, that's the DP. Change the command, so it's kick. It's kick now. So that removes some command overlap, that's nice. That's like a nice little thing. EX Guardian of the Sun, change the invincibility timing from 6 frames to 5 frames. That's not going to affect too much, but it is a nerf. Soul Spark, change the command. That's also a kick, so it's the same. So it's just removing command overlap. Reduce the damage from 100 to 80, that's warranted. 20 damage is... It already does quite a lot of damage for a move you can combo or DP after. Reduce the stun from 200 to 150, that's nice. Increase the chip damage from 7 to 13, it already does a pretty good amount of chip. I'm surprised they're making it do more. Um, Like, double the chip, too. Shit. This is mostly buffs? Anti-air V-Skill getting better is a good buff. V-Skill into V-Trigger existing is a good buff. Hard kick getting nerfed as an anti air is bad, like really bad, but if you have a better anti air V skill, and you still have crutch fear, so it's not that big of a deal, but it is bad. Uh, motion changes are just quality of life. Uh, damage loss on Soul Spark is a nerf and kind of significant, but not super duper significant. Um, what else? Uh, loss of invincibility for one frame is not a huge deal. Overall, these are buffs. She was buffed, but not was buffed. Uh, scary shit. Scary shit. Watch out. Watch out for Minot. 
Gal got a nerf. He has a harder time activating in VT2. Most of Gal's changes weren't super significant. Ed. Ed was released before Minot. Why is he next? Standing Light Punch. Reduce the upwards hitbox. That's nerf to anti-air jab. Same with Crutch Light Punch. Crutch Medium Punch is now plus two on block. So he used to have a three frame frame trap with two Crutch Medium Punches. And now it's a four frame frame trap. So now you can three frame jab your way out of it. But it's not a huge deal because he can still like make three frame frame traps. But he just has to use lights instead, which don't go as far. So he had pretty ridiculous lockdown with Crutch Medium Punch. He could do like three of them in a row and it's very hard to beat it. But now he can only do that on four frame characters. But that's like plus three... Plus three is pretty rare in this game, so that's like a... It's kind of weird that he had that, but it's like a nerf. It's a respectable nerf. Crouch hard punch, reduced damage, that's bad, because you use this for his max damage punish combos, and you also use it as an anti-air. Damage on the extended part, reduced from 80 to 70, so the anti-air version was reduced as well. When triggering crush counter on an airborne opponent, the flip value has made the same as crush counter on a grounded opponent, so that just makes combos consistent. I didn't even know they were different. That's nice. Kill step, that's probably the virus. And it has a hitbox, and, or hurtbox rather, and it moves more. That's, overall, that's probably nerfed. I'm just saying it, you know, it exists. Well, I mean, obviously they're inconsistent if they fucking had to make them consistent. It's probably like they were very, very close and now they're identical. Psycho Flash, I haven't even gotten there. Psycho Flash increased the move delay from Psycho Rising by five frames. So now it you have to do Psycho Rising for longer. You can do you have this is the upkick. You have to do the upkick for longer before you can dive. That's not um super duper I don't I don't know what that changes. I think you wanted an early dive uh to get VT one stuff. If you did like rising into dive into immediate VT one, you could get better stuff than if you delayed it. I don't know. Usually the delay gives you the same stuff that the instant does, so I don't know. Psycho Snatcher, that's V skill. Reduce the V meter gain from the non charged version. That's not a huge change because he already can't land that. Um, I'm not going to check the score on stream right now. Oh, you get better stuff if you delay it. Well, now it's forcing you to delay it. Time out, I'm fucking... This is hard. Reduce the V gauge meter gain for the charged version. So he loses V meter on both of them. The charged one is something that people actually go for. Change the motion for the non-charged version. The hit motion. Then will leave him in a different place. Added two frames of recovery for the non-charged on hit. So I thought that already had, like, shitty Oki. I can't picture the Oki on the non-charged version. I never see it happen. People don't land that very often. He, like, shakes his fist at you for that one, right? Change show the first hit counts as a counter hit. The counter hit effect will carry over to the second hit. That's a buff. Uh, reduce the recovery on whiff for the charged version from 57 to 40. That's... That's pretty significant. They're cutting off a lot of the recovery. That might make it harder to jump over it. That's actually, like, that's a lot to cut off. 17 frames. I mean, you can still jump it if you, like, jump as soon as you see him charging. But, like, yeah. Uh, 40 frames means it might be a little bit harder to punish. If you're jumping from far away or late or something like that. So the anti-air one. Reduce the recovery on whiff for the charged version from 50 to 40. That's... Not very significant because you you should only ever be comboing into the charged version, but it's good if you drop a combo. Expanded the downwards hitbox for the non-charged version. That just makes it more easy to pick up in combos. Every now and then, you have to be really fast about your down V skill to actually pick up the combo after like a EX splash or like a crush counter combo. You have to be like instant with that shit. So if it has a better downwards hitbox, that means it's going to be easier to pick up. New combos, shit. Change so the first hit counts as a counter hit. The whole thing does. Meter gain distribution is changed in accordance with the damage. Mm. 
Psycho Cannon damage increased from 100 to 120. That's, what is this, VT1? Psycho Cannon? Reduce the startup from 16 to 13 when the moves performed with the forward input, so it comes out faster if you're holding forward. Deleted the hurt blocks during the screen freeze. Those are hurt blocks during the screen freeze. Maybe that means that he can't be interrupted from throwing it. I don't know. That's a hundred uh, extra twenty damage isn't enough. I don't know. That's worth picking over. It's enhanced nature. Reduced the recovery by three frames from performed from a cancel. Deleted the hurt box during the screen freeze. So maybe he can do like new combos when performed from a cancel. That makes it sound like it's shaving off the last three frames, or he has three extra frames to combo the opponent after every V trigger cancel. That sounds like a pretty nice buff. Way better than Snatcher? I've never seen a single Ed pick VT1 since VT2 was added. I don't know enough to dispute that. On block, we'll deal real chip damage instead of recoverable gray damage. I did. I thought it did real chip damage. <laughs> so now it's like a special move, right? Instead of like a heavy. Added projectile nullifying hitbox aside from the attack hitbox. So now it can probably nullify projectile and still hit the opponent. So that's good. Um, expanded the horizontal hitbox for the first active frame. So that's. I guess it hits a little sooner. It hits far away opponents a little sooner. Depends on how far. Depends a lot on ranges here. Reduce the horizontal hurt box, so harder to counter hit. Reduce the amount of V timer consumption. So now you can do maybe a third one. Or, you know, a fourth, whatever. You you got a little bit more time, I guess. Or maybe another Ultra Snatcher, depending on how this all works. Expand the hurt hit box for the attack active frames from 1 to 3. I didn't know it was only one shit. Expanded the position for the hitbox of the attack frames from 4 to 7. Change the position of the hitbox. So this is in the when it's actually pretty far up. It changed its hitbox. It might be getting lower or higher, it doesn't say. Increase the amount of EX... This is the super, I think. Increase the amount of EX gauge meter gain for the opponent upon hit from 75 to 100. So if the opponent eats that, they get 100 meter. That seems to be a relatively consistent thing now. Abigail, Vitality, a little bit less. 25 is not a lot, but it's a nice thing. He has more stun. They buffed his stun. Good lord. Hurtbox shape. Hold on, don't tell me about soccer. I'm getting close. Change the height of the hurtbox and closing box for spinning knockdown damage. So that's like spin stun. That's like if you anti-air with like Kimmy counter hit. Uh, counter, Kami counter hit mid air hard kick that kind of knockdown. Spin stun knockdown. I didn't know that his was weird. Although I'm not surprised, almost all of his hurt boxes are weird. Forward throw leaves you further from the corner. Standing light kick is now six frames again. It was five. It was like six, then five, and now it's six again. So now he can't do crouch light kick, stand light kick. I think. I think they removed that link. Um. That's a, uh, that's a, uh, that's that's a nerf because that was his max damage light chain. Light kick, stand light kick did the most damage of all his lights. Standing hard punch V trigger stun decreased for the charged version from 200 to 150, so now less stun on charged fierce. That's really good because you led to ridiculously stun stunny combos. Um, crouch light punch start up increased from five to six. So, okay, now he has no links from low short again. He's just got a two, two low shorts, right? He has, like, no other thing to combo from after a low short except another low short. So that's... And he can't do three low shorts, I don't think. So that hurts his light normal links a lot. Um, Can he even still do three light normals with those changes? I feel like he can't. 
I feel like one of them always had to be a crutch like kick. It was like stand like kick, crutch like kick, stand like kick, or like crutch like kick, and then two crutch like punches, or like stuff like that. Is that five? Stand like punch five? I thought stand like punch was six. Okay, well he still has something. If you can do crutch like kick into two light punches, then he still has a three frame, a three hit confirm. Reduced downward hit box. That might actually be a buff. Well, it sounds like a buff. Recovery increased. Okay, so he's got a little bit more recovery on jabs. That's nice because they're kind of nasty. They're like really good jabs. Remove the counter hit judgment after the attack start up. Oh, I didn't realize that. He could trade and still get counter hit. Crutch light kick increased pushback on hit. Okay, so that might remove um, three hit confirms. You might not be able to do crutch light kick into two light punches anymore because you get more pushback. Can only be canceled into V trigger. So now he can't cancel. Whoa, that's actually pretty significant. He can't cancel low short. I mean, it's not like a huge deal, but since you can't link very easily out of low short, and since you can't link into low short and then cancel it, uh, that changes his light almost quite a lot. So you've got low short into stand jab into potentially a second one, depending on spacing or whether that even works at all. And then you've got uh, stand jab into low short or stand short into low short. Uh won't be good anymore. I don't even know if you could ever do stand jab into low short, but stand short into low short is not good anymore. Alright, I'll have this open. If I think his guy ones are the same as guy's actual moves. I think I know all of fucking his move names, to be honest. I'm like pretty sure I know most of them. We'll find out when we get there. Card charge punch done decreased after the charge version. Um or for the charge version. That's nice. If you charge up, it doesn't say V trigger one. <laughs> it should. It said it said it for the other one. Um, so he got really really big damage, uh, really big stun combos with that. Vroom vroom. That's two jabs. Increase the pushback on hit. So again, it's gonna be a l really limiting to combo out of them. Abby hammer. That's the toy strong. Change to the third active frame will hit a down opponent. That might be a buff. That sounds like a buff. If that's towards strong, which I think it is. Downed opponent. What, wait, what does that mean? Oh, this is an OTG. I didn't even know Abby Hammer was an OTG. What the fuck? That's a thing. There are like a bunch of OTGs in Street Fighter Five, but most of them are very, like... OTGing is not a thing you really do that much. Because most people just quick stand every knockdown if they can. Um, That's neat, I guess. That means that you can... that. Third active frame means that it'll hit, it'll have a lot of plus frames. So that means that you should be able to link out of this always. That means you can do OTG stick towards strong into like a uh, short into Abigail punch or something like that. That actually sounds like it has a cool follow up. Unfortunately, that won't matter at all because no one will ever get hit by it. Abby Blaster, I think that's back card punch. Stun decrease for the charge version from 250 to 150. Abby Twist, okay, that one might be. Back hard punch. This is back hard punch and forward hard punch. So they're both getting a stun nerf on the charge version. So his stun is getting cut down to shit. And by shit, I mean he's getting 600 stun instead of 900 stun. Which is good, because fucking he did way too much stun damage. Ontario drop. Via reversal startup increased from 16 to 17. Reduced the opponent's blowback. So that's... He recovers closer to them on hit, I guess? Oh yeah, low short doesn't cancel anymore. Well, it depends on how plus he is. Let me think about that. What's the current on hit plus frames for towards strong? What actually is it on hit? Is it plus one? Is it plus two? I don't know. Just add two frames and that'll be what it is now. So if it's plus three, it's going to plus five. And that means he gets stint jab. But if it's anything less than that, he doesn't get a combo. Yix giant flip. Damage decreased from 120 to 80. So that's... that His his one bar damage is insanely high. Oh, neat. Overhead into stand jab into Abigail punch, perhaps. Um, So this is... this is His one bar damage is just through the roof. And this is cutting it down quite a lot. 40 is a huge drop. It's like a huge, huge drop. He's getting his damage really cut down for one bar. But his one bar damage is like the highest in the game by far, so I don't give a fuck. Medium and hard Abigail smash. That's the punch. Made the situation after hit the same as light. 
Okay. He spent the hurt box during recovery, so now he's easier to punish. They have like they're all very minus, but um Oh Abigail smashes No yeah, that's the No, what the fuck? Abigail punch might be the punch, and Abigail smash might be the command grab. Help me out. Yeah, because Abigail smash damn yeah, this is the command grab, isn't it? Okay, so they're all the same as the light command grab and easier to punish. Damage decreased from 100 to 80, so now less damage off of an EX command grab. He has the Even with this, he has the highest damage from a grab in the whole game, including, like, uh, Ziggy. So, whatever. Expanded the herbox during recovery, sure. Bear Sunrise, I think this is the grab from the run. Added four frames of recovery after the throw, so it's more punishable. Increased the separation distance after hit, so he throws you further away. Added three frames of recovery, so easier to punish. Hybrid charge. Fix the phenomenon where the advantage dis advantage disadvantage when performed as a cancel from certain regular moves was different than that of max power. So this is VT2, I think. So now it's making it so they have the same plus frames regardless of which VT you're going into. Metro Crash is the release for VT2, I think. On block, opponent takes actual damage instead of recoverable damage, so it's like a chip now. Reduce the upwards hitbox so it's easier to jump over. Thank fucking god. Thank God, thank God, fuck. That was so stupid how tall it was. Now it's more like uh now it's more like Alex VT one and less like a fucking full screen hitbox. Enforced combo count restrictions on the non charged version. So now it's harder to juggle into. You might not have like a late Abigail punch into VT one. I mean VT two. Damage decreased? No. Increased. That's nice. Stun increased. That's nice. Damage increased for the charged. Okay, so they're making it more rewarding, but harder to combo into. And also, they made it so you can actually fucking jump over it. This is this is like his biggest fucking... That's a huge nerf to this. Not that a lot of Abigails just pick BT1, and I don't blame them. Abigail punch. Okay, that's the Abigail punch. That's quarter circle floor punch. So now it's harder to juggle into, which is nice. Increase the knockdown time for the first hit. Um... So with this, you might not be able to do double charged back fierce into Abigail Punch. You might just have to do two, two double charged back fierces and then be done with your combo. Increase the knockdown time for the first hit. So if you just do the first hit only and then V-Trigger cancel, you've got a little bit more Oki. Stun decreased for non-button press version. I don't know why they would... There's, is there a single reason not to mash? Like, do you actually... Is there any reason not to mash Abigail Punch? I can't think of any. You don't get any extra scaling for mashing it. Why would you not mash it? You decrease the stun on the regular one, too. I mean, the mashed one. Added 8 frames of recovery to the rapid button press version. Oh. So if, now if you mash it, you have less Oki. Okay, 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 okay. That might actually be really nice. So now if you don't mash, you get Oki. And if you do mash, you get damage and stun. That's uh, it's a decision you now have to make, whereas previously you just mashed and there was no reason not to ever. Increase the knockdown time for the first hit, same. Change the blowback distance on first hit counter hit to be the same as regular hit version. Okay. Uh, same as changes. Recovery increased on rapid button press version by 8 frames. This is all, this is all the same. As the non-EX one. This is changed numbers. Tone down overall in consideration of his ability to rush down opponents at close range and rewards on hit. So he still has big ass fucking normals. I didn't see any changes about hitboxes and hitboxes. So he's still going to be a big fat hitbox motherfucker. But the changes to his lights and the changes to his juggle sound like really big nerfs. And the changes to his one bar sound like a big nerf. So overall his damage and stun is going to shoot down. Which is good because he's stupid. Zeku old. Surigane Otoshi. Damage increase. Damage increase from back throw 2. Stand light punch, reduce the upwards hitbox. They nerfed this like twice. Stand medium punch, reduce the upwards... Huh? I thought that was not an accident. I thought he was supposed to have stand medium punch as an A tier. I guess you've got to use the fucking DP now. I thought he had both. I thought it was like, oh, you can use the stand medium punch or you can use the DP. <laughs> I didn't realize that was a bug. I thought that was intended. Crouch light punch, worse as an A tier. 
Jump hard punch, expanded the hitbox at the base. That sounds like you can maybe use it a little bit. It's bigger. Fukuro, chainsaw will not build EX gauge on hit or block. Okay, I don't know what the fuck that is. Got me. What the fuck is Fukuro? V scale. Okay. Um. Chainsaw will not build EX gauge on hit or block. That's a shame, but whatever. Oh, no, that's normal. V skills don't build V meter. I mean, they only build V meter. They don't build EX. That's like the same as every other character. Toshi. Is that his viewers? It is. What the fuck? What the fuck? So it's 12 frame startup, which is really fucking fast. Change the opponent reaction from blowback to stagger on hit. Oh, that's like Chun Li and Ken. Okay, so he's getting a Chun Li and Ken style Viewers instead of his old one. So that's. If it does the same damage, that's a buff. Because Chun Li and Ken, they have 40 damage. But if he gets 60. I don't know, the blowback is nice. Knocking the opponent over is good. But a 12 frame startup is really good. And it still pushes them pretty far back, I guess, if it says increase the pushback on block. That might be better. It might not. It depends on whether you like the knockdown via verse or like the non knockdown via verse. They're both good for different reasons. Bush and Graham, that's the one where he um Okay, Koku and Koku is straight and uh uh Teki is upward. And then DP is Bon, I think. Damage decrease at the base and the part that nullifies projectiles by ten. Okay, so he loses a little bit of damage on the straight one. Light DP got worse. EX does more blowback for the first is that right? Hold on. Whoa. Um Bon is DP plus kick. Yeah, I had it right. Um okay, this is this is better. This is worse. If you anti-air with EX, I guess it throws the opponent further out. And if you anti-air with light, you get less damage. Um light Bushin Gram Techie. Change the horizontal black back distance on hit. That's the upward kick one. Um so it throws out farther. Damage increase at the base. Damage decreased on the projectile modifier. Okay, so he's losing damage on the upward ones. Expanded the hitbox of the part that physically hits from the second hit onward. So he might have a better hitbox for that EX one. EX Bushin Jakura. Change the movement distance upon directional key input. This sounds like flip. EX flip. Change movement distance upon... So now he can steer it more. Um, and it moves in a different way on startup. Probably moving more forward, or I don't know. It's a mystery. Yeah, they all had the same damage and stun before, so now light's a little bit weaker. I think they had a different invincibility too. I forget. Maybe they all had the same invincibility. They had different uh, movement, and Oki. Shuku Mio can be cancelled from Bushin Gram Koku Bonteki on hit only. Shuku Mio. Down to, oh, it's, it's the transform. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder if you can do, I wonder if there's a juggle anywhere. I wonder if you can do, like, crutch fierce into techie, the upward hitting one, and then transform, and then juggle into, like, a shoulder or something like that. That'd be really cool if there's juggle time. But even if there isn't, that makes transforming a little bit easier. Because this is a borderline OS. It's on hit only. So you can just throw out fucking Bushing Kokus, and if they any if any of them hit, you can transform. Up kick change young air throw. That's actually really cool. Yeah. Shit. That's gonna be really. This is really cool. We're gonna get some good stuff. Ida ten. The first normal move performed from Ida ten can be cancelled. Yeah, it's okay. It's the hard punch, hard kick. Okay, so you can do cancels from the first one. So like, if I did hard kick into the dash into another hard kick. I could then do it into like a fucking hard Koku or something like that. Or hard techie. That had invincibility? What? Oh, no, I knew that. I knew it had invincibility. Now it's got less. Chance of crouching hard punch from E to 10 that hits a crouching opponent will force stand. I didn't know it didn't. That's funny. But it didn't matter back then, but now it will. Because now you need the force stand in order to... Because he, he could only combo into stuff where it didn't matter previously, whether they were standing or not. But now he can combo into... Uh, now you can do like a crutch hard punch. Now if the opponent's, if you do like stay medium, no, let's say crutch short crutch jab, 
and the opponent's crouching and you like do the slide, then you can chain your way to a or you can just go to a I don't know from a jab, but you could go to a crouch hard punch and then do a uh techie and techie requires a standing opponent. Kura Karura Tenzon. Trust the phenomenon where all the hits would not connect when cancelled from certain parts of EX Bush and Graham. Is that a super? No, it's not. Karura. Karura. Help. B trigger two. Got it. Eureka. Um, I didn't know that. I guess I never tried it from EX. I didn't know it lost hits. Change the movement distance for the initial startup so it might go farther or it might go less far. It already goes pretty far right now. So if it goes less far, then it's going to be a better anti-air. But if it goes further, it's going to be an anti-fireball. Change from one-time usage to timer type. Added the special move Karura Tenzan. Okay, so you either get two uses or you just activate the first time and then you get a use the second time. So that's really good because it means, one, you get a Roman Cancel that you can use for combos and stuff, confirming. And it also means that you can do the Karura Tenzan without it being scaled. So that's like a big buff to make it timer usage. It says one-time usage. Oh, no, that's what it was from. So it sounds like it's just going to be like, uh, let me think. Like, basically, Vegas VT2 minus the parry. It's going to have an activate and then a one-time use, if you just only use the use. It's like, mm, and characters are not really buffed or nerfed significantly. Some characters are buffed, some characters are nerfed. Damage decreased from 180 to 140. They actually made it weaker. One of the only things it had over VT1 was that it was slightly stronger. But I guess now that you can dodge the scaling, that's fine. The dim the power won't change that much. Stun decreased from 200 to 150. That's a nerf. On hit, reduce the opponent's blowback time by 3 frames. On hit, change the projectile invincibility until the active frames end. So it's better at beating projectiles? <laughs> yeah, now you can do like crutch hard kick and to activate in VT2 still. Or like stuff like that. You can use it as a confirm. Increase the amount of EX gauge meter gain for super. Young Zeku. Forward throw, stronger. Back throw, way stronger. And more stun. That's, wow. Lots of back throw buffs. Send light punch, worse at anti-airing. Jump hard punch, change the hitboxes and her boxes to match a change in the motion. Huh? So are they changing the animation and then also changing the hitboxes to match it? Jump hard kick, expand the forward hitbox. Deleted the forward hurtbox. So it's a much better anti-air. Tenpo Kari. I don't know what the fuck is going on with that one. That's the B skill. Why do they have different names? Damage increased. So more reward. There are it's already decently strong to go for this as a combo ender, but now it's even stronger. More reward for constantly swapping styles. Expanded the upwards hitbox for the startup of the second hit. I thought it was lock in. Who cares about the second hit? Active famous from the second hit. Increase from two to four. Huh? I don't understand what's going on here. I didn't realize this could fall out. I don't know why it needs all active frames and upwards hitbox. The first hit's the one where he kind of just throws his hand up, isn't it? It's a mystery. V-reverse, same as the young form. Bushin show. Oops. Man, this is useful. Thanks, Mono. Bushin show. Aha! Cross circle forward punch. It's the palm. Ease the combo count, so it's easier to juggle into. That's yeah, I can already you can already combo into it from like most everything. What am I what can you what new probably just stance swap combos. Now you can end in palm. Hard boost and show fix the phenomenon where for hard one only the projectile not flying hitbox would not be generated. So the hard one would occasionally not pro destroy projectiles, I guess. Didn't know that. Yeah, boost and show recovery increased from twenty to twenty one. Um, that's a slight nerf. I don't know. <laughs> I I think he has some. Th he might lose a cancel from that. Or no, no. It's um. 
Now what the hell does this do? This is this is the recovery of it, and it's it makes it easier to whiff punish, I guess, but like, I don't know, I didn't know that people it's one frame different. You can't VT cancel that. You can't fucking or maybe you can now. It's a mystery. It makes it easier whiff punish, but no one whiffs EX boost and show. We'll wait, we'll come back to that one. Hard Hosanto, attack stud up reducing twenty seven to twenty six. That makes it marginally easier to go through fireballs. Ashikari, damage increased from 80 to 100. Ashikari. Ashikari. It's the run slide. So more damage on run slide, and it's easier to juggle into. So now you maybe have juggled into run slide rather than palm if you want, which is good because run slide has better Oki, I think. EX slide is more stun and also easier to juggle into. Gecko, that's probably the the overhead. It is. Gecko. So easier to combo into. I I didn't I th I've never seen a juggle into this. It's gonna be really cool if you can do like fierce fierce or something into a fucking run overhead. I'm kinda curious to see what the hell becomes available. That might be a good ender, to be honest. Shukimyo, we just read that one. What the fuck was it? Oh, this is the that's the form swap. Can be cancel on two from Bushin Show, Hosanto, Ashikari. Okay, so now we're in there. The expulsion show can be cancelled into swap forms. So you have an extra frame to play with. He's probably gonna it's probably gonna make it safer on block or give him a combo on hit or something like that. So all of his special moves in both forms can be cancelled into form swap. That's gonna give him a lot of new combos. That's actually really good for him. Definitely, oh, I don't know definitely, but like probably if you get like a any sort of Hosanto, you can do a stance swap and then uh, juggle from there. Hosanto launch is pretty high. Ida 10, first normal move performed, so this is VT1 again. This actually matters for young Zeku. For old Zeku, he can already cancel. Or not, he can already cancel, but like, um, um, this is this is giving him some interesting combos. Samurai House, activate. Samurai House, special move. Might be good. Or stand for your special move, I don't know. Crouch Fierce. It's okay for both of them. Less invincibility. All the same changes for VT2. No changes to like anti air attacks, so young Zeku still sucks at anti airing. Still gotta use that light shoulder. Sakura, this is what I've been waiting for this whole time. Alright, I'm gonna fucking wring my hands together real fast. I'm guessing that run slide into swap is still unsafe. Don't get your hopes up too high. Forward throw, one extra frame of recovery. RIP my throw loop. Increase the separation distance upon landing a throw in the corner. RIP my throw loop. Backwards throw, more damage. Air throw, way more damage. 20 more. Then recovery increased on whiff. I don't care about that that much. It rarely whiffs. I only do it when it works, baby. Haru Kaze. Can we cancel into from normal cancel? Oh, is this her V skill? Tengyo Hadoken into Visca. Oh, oh my, oh my god. That's a pretty significant buff. That means charged back, that means back fierce into charged upward fireball into V skill into punches is a, uh, is a crush counter punish. Hogasho, that's the VT1. This doesn't hit on the way up, unlike Chun Li, so it's not a huge deal. V Hadoken, that's that might be good. That means you don't need to that's cool. That means you can basically always do Hadoken into B skill and then that's hard for the opponent to anti air. And then you get a mix up. This is this is overall really good. It's also a buff to her VT one in general, but like this is really good. This is gonna this is gonna give her some neat stuff to play with. Mostly it's only gonna change her, her crush counter punishes, but it will like change some other stuff. So night punch, reduce the upward hitbox. This was a decent anti air jab, and now it's worse. Send light kick, active frames reduced from 4 to 3. They always take active frames from the back and not the front. So I'm not worried about that. But that is, uh, it's worse as an empty cancel. Adjusted the motion? So it's, yeah, it might not go as far. That sounds like they, when it says adjusted the motion, that sounds like it changed the animation. So she's probably going to have a nerfed stand light kick. I'm guessing that it won't go nearly as far, because it's like the biggest light in the whole game by a pretty comfortable margin. It'll probably go as far as, like, reuse thin light kick instead of, like, fucking a foot farther. Crouch medium punch. 
plus five on hit. Yes, this is what I've been waiting for. Crouch medium punch is like it's it's a button I've been waiting to have. So now I can do crouch medium punch into stand short, and stand jab. I mean stand strong into low strong is going to be better. Um, stands jab into low strong is a frame trap on block and a counter hit. It's a combo on counter hit. So now she might have stand jab low strong stand short as a counter hit combo. That's going to be good. Um, pushback on hit slightly decreased. That's good. That's definitely good. Pushback on block slightly decreased. That's still good because it's plus on block, I think. I don't know. It might be neutral on block. I don't know what it is on block. Um, these are all really good. These are all really fucking good. That's a really good change to crouch medium punch. Furiko upper, that's the back fierce. Expanded the forward hitbox for the first active frame. Thank God that means that it probably will not fall out. If there's if you're not point blank, stand strong into back fierce can whiff on the first frame and then hit on the second where it no longer links. And then um uh you get a useless back fierce that if you cancel it you die. So she used to have to use low forward at those ranges, but now it's sounding like she can just use back fierce more easily from more ranges. So that's really good. Move the hitbox forward for active frame three frame, huh? So now it moves even farther forward. Frame 3 frame will no longer trigger a crush counter. So that sounds like it's for anti-airing. Reduce the backwards hitbox. That sounds like it's for anti-airing. Sounds like you can maybe anti-air with it better. It already anti-airs okay, but it doesn't trigger hitbox very much, so it's not great. Sakura Toshi. That's the punch follow-up of V-Skill. Change the stun distribution from 240 to 240. So now I get stronger for each hit. I don't know if that's going to... That might be bad for scaling, actually. That might make it less done overall. Same with the uh, same with the other one. Oh, Kokakyaku. Damage increased from 60 to 80. That might be her V-reverse? No, Floral Spin is her V-reverse. What the hell is Kokakyaku? That's her overhead, probably. Probably her overhead is going from 60 to 80 damage. Oh, that sounds like a command normal, and that's like her only... Kyaku means kick. 17 frame V-reverse, it's slower. Push back on block less, that's bad. Hogasha, reduce the hitbox. That's... Uh, why would they do that? Added 5 frames of recovery on whiff. Wow, this wasn't even that good. They made it worse. They made it, like, way worse. Reduce the hitbox. Added 5 frames of... It's, you can't whiff it anymore. <laughs> why? Why'd they do that? That's not fair. They buffed her VT1 in other ways, so I don't care. But, like, wow. Her head's flower kick? What the hell is... Oh, yeah, it's V-Skill kick. Damage increase of V-Skill kick. No, the Chin Buster is literally like Chin Buster. I'd recognize that one's name. It's got a very unique name. Hogasho is uh, VT1, hard punch plus hard kick. It's the little attack where she's plus. She can do, like, low strong into fireball. Or, um... Stand strong, low forward into uh, DP. Hard Shinpi Kyaku. Damage increased from 80 to 100. That's nice. Reduce the startup from 25 to 24. Every little bit counts. Expanded the hurt box for the second hit. Um, that's... Mm, makes it easier to anti-air, I guess. If you treat it like a jump. Hadoken damage increased from 50 to 60. That's nice. That means you can actually Hadoken. 80, 100 damage for EX Hadoken. Startup decreased from 17 to 14. That's big. That's a big buff. Change the overall movement frames from 48 to 45. Expanded the forward hitbox. Can now be cancelled into V Jury. Yeah, she got the Ryu confirm. I'm in there, dude. Soccer is my main forever. That's actually huge. Her V trigger confirms are so shit. They're so shit. Like, stand back fierce into V-Trigger is just fine. And low forward into V-Trigger is pretty good. And that's it. That's all she has. She has no fucking V-Trigger activate combos. And none of her attacks advance, so you can't, like, use... You can't, like, do, like, some kind of... If you do hard kick into V-Trigger, you're far as fuck away after the activate. Um, This is... This is big. I'm gonna do a lot of, like... You can combo EX Sudoken after, like, back fierce. You can do stand strong, back fierce... EX Shadow can activate and then juggle like a... You could definitely juggle a DP 
and you can probably juggle a VT2 Tatsu or like a um, VT2 DP or probably a VT1 Fireball. Abigail got nerfed to shit. This is a big buff. V Hadoken, uh, it's just like your EX Hadoken. They just made it more like your EX Hadoken. Charging it is faster. And it's plus 10? It's not even that hard to charge, but I guess you don't have that many of them, so you could get fucked up while you're trying to charge it. This is big. Well, that's not big, but like all the V Hadoken is... Her EX Hadoken and V Hadoken are going to be really good now. It's already really good. That's the thing. Reduce the damage from 70 to 60 for Tengyo. That's not a big deal. Shinji overall movement. You never use Tengyo, so only I don't only care about the charge one. Shinji's the opponent's blowback on hit. Expanded the forward hitbox. That might help. This might actually be a good anti-air if they made it bigger. Because right now you could just jump over it. It's not very scary. Chainsaw will not hit a crouching opponent. Oh yeah, you could do that on like some characters or something. You could hit like crouching Abigail and shit. Change so it will cause a knockdown on hit. That's I don't know if that's good. You can't really combo into it very easily, and all the stuff you can combo into, it's not very good on block. <laughs> Active frames change from twenty four to twenty seven. I don't know if I'll ever use that. Less active frames, change movement, increased float on hit, so more juggle from the EX Tengo. So now it might be better to do back face into EX Tengo than it was before. Change set will not hit a crouching opponent. Can now be cancelled into V-Trigger. So that's going to change her uh, activate combos from Crush Counter. Now it's going to be like back fierce into charged EX Tengyo into um, activate. I don't know. You might be better off just activating before your combo starts. V Tengyo. Uh, bust, bust, buffs. Just the combo count. I don't know, that means you can't do a Tatsu afterwards or something like that. Change the opponent's foot on hit. That might leave them higher. You might get a hard Tatsu afterwards. It depends. We need to see. Knockdown on hit means if it's hitting a grounded opponent, I think. Dimension increased from 100 to 110. That's nice. Change the overall movement frames just with the combo count. Change the opponent's foot. These, these two matter a lot, but I can't tell if they're buffs or nerfs until we actually get the game. Change that will not hit a crouching opponent. EX Show can reduce the opponent's blowback distance on hit, so they recover closer to you, I guess. Sakura Rain, that's the super. The opponent could not perform a V reversal when Sakura Rain was cancelled into from certain block special moves. Wow, I would have been abusing that if I'd known that was a thing. <laughs> it's kind of hard to get the opponent to block a charge to Doken. It's not that hard, but it's hard enough. VT2 is usually better, but it's less of a difference than you would think. VT1 is okay. But VT2 is better. VT, VT2 gives her high damage off of variant hits, which is where Sakura already shines. And um, VT1 gives her high damage off of confirms and crush counters, which is which happens less. Or like beefy confirms and crush counters. Not really. Your damage is just kind of higher in general in VT2. Only crush counters. Do you, would, would you rather have VT1? Quick rolling. Increase the pushback on block. Increase the opponent's blowback on hit. So he's just further away from you afterwards. VT1 is getting buffed quite a lot. Jungle Dynamo, Lightning Beast, that's both his triggers. Reduce two frames of recovery on V-Trigger Cancel, so now he can do more stuff after a trigger cancel. That's pretty good. That probably means he can do low forward. Or like, I don't know, maybe not low, low forward, you can already do stuff. But that probably means he can do like maybe like low forward activate stain fierce or something like that. He should have some new combos because of that. Electric Thunder is now plus three on block. Holy shit! That means he can do a little bit more walking. Ex Electric Thunder is 120 and more stun and feature cancel. Blanca is another character with kind of lacking in V trigger cancels. So Ex Electric Thunder into V trigger cancel can probably be juggled into VT1, uh, like Blanca Ball or like VT2 Blanca Ball into a Zip or stuff like that. You probably wouldn't use a Zip but you can now get a little ender there, and that's a nice way to confirm it anyway. Yeah, V Electric Thunder stun increased quite a lot. Wow. Back step rolling, that's the... Is that just... Is that just... No, that's ground shave roll I'm thinking of. What the fuck is back step? Oh, that's the rainbow roll. 
Change flow back distance on mid air hit, so it probably leaves them closer or farther. I don't know. Use combo count. You can probably juggle into it from something now. Like what? Staying fierce into back step rolling? Just naturally work, I guess? Decrease the landing. Or, I mean, not fierce. Well, yeah, fierce, but like, uh. No, I don't know. What the fuck? V skill. V skill punch into activate into back step rolling? I don't know. There's something there. Decrease the landing frame recovery from 14 frames to 11. That makes it just better. Easier to whiff. That's nice. That's a good buff. He expects step rolling, decrease the landing recovery. So, wow. If he lands, he's basically recovered. Shit. 13 to 5. Be back step rolling, 14 to 11. Nice little... So he can he can whiff it easier now. He can already whiff it pretty easily, so... Ground shape rolling. That's VT1 hard punch plus hard kick. Change to the first and second hits will be blocked successively. Reduce the disadvantage on block from minus 14 to minus 8. Okay, so that's like little nerfs. Makes it more unsafe. Max charge. Uh, damage went down, and the final hit causes a guard break. So that's like uh, Abigail. That's a lot like Abigail, actually. Those are nice buffs to VT1, which is good because VT2 was like the only one people ever picked. That's all rather nice. I agree with almost every change I read. Same game kick, hard kick, B trigger, rainbow roll, EX up ball in the corner. Yeah, maybe. That sounds pretty good. That's what. That's almost certainly the launcher it's going to use with. I don't know why I said B skill punch. I mean, that probably works, but like... Three. 